Hi, and welcome back to Cut the Craggle. It's been a while since the last live stream, I think. <laughs> yeah, was it Welcome to Apocalypseburg, maybe? So it's great to be here. We decided that we were going to do a live stream today before I even realized that it was actually Mother's Day, at least here in the UK. I know it's different across the world, <laughs> Mother's Day, but it's Mother's Day here, but it's all good. And uh, the reason we are here today is because Mrs. Craggle has finally, finally gotten her hands on the Lego bonsai tree. Finally, and it took how many months? I don't know, about three months to come out. Was it first of January, I think it came out? I think it did. But yeah. I've had this for ages. Because also you've got the Lego Pets yeah. brickheads, which you were going to build, but then the bonsai came yesterday. Yeah. So... You decide you're going to build that. Seven in the morning. If she gets through that, then she might go on to the uh, the brickheads. But the bonsai is the main thing here. And that's not all we've got in the store for you, because we also have a very special guest. He's a good friend of mine, all the way from the distant land of Ireland. And here, I want to give you a very big warm welcome to Mr. Cy O'Connor. Very good. I uh, welcome, say, um, to, welcome to Boys Club. It's a great pleasure to meet you, Daniel, because believe it or not, one of my children had many imaginary baths with you. Really? <laughs> <laughs> I, 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 I bathed you often with okay. one of my children. Well, it's, it's, nice to, it's, nice to meet you. it's nice to get better acquainted. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so sorry. I, I put Sai O'Connor into, uh, into our stock footage clips and uh, I accidentally uh, got Sinead O'Connor. You know, that was me before the change. <laughs> resemblance is uncanny it could be your sister <laughs> or, or or my brother <laughs> <laughs> very true <laughs> how the devil are we good thanks uh good to be here with you both yeah it's great to have you here it's been a long time since we've properly chatted because i'm i'm trying to think and the last time i think i had you on a live stream was when i held you hostage that one time when yeah. we kept talking, um, I think it was, who was it? It was me and oh, Chris. Chris. And uh, you were there, like, putting your hand up, going, I gotta go, can I go, please? please sir? I think that was all that the Batman stream. I don't think it was Batman related at all, in as far as building goes, but um, oh. ooh, that was a lot of Batman. Diagonally. Yes, I think, yeah, I think it was. Exactly. Wow, that's a long time ago. That was that was a great series though. We had some great fun on those streams building Diagon Alley. Even if yeah. I did get a uh, a lot of flack for how long it took me to build it. <laughs> <laughs> Will you still beat Greg in building the Apocalypseburg? That is true. I did beat Greg in building the Apocalypseburg. Was it five streams? Uh, I think it was four streams. I think. I can't remember. It definitely beat Greg. It, it, yeah, his was like what fourteen. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, I think I'm still be beating Sai and building the Death Star. And I haven't even started yet, you know. So. <laughs> well, there's still hope, yeah. <laughs> I haven't even bought the set yet, and already I'm ahead of you. <laughs> and I've seen other people build it after they bought after I bought it, and they've have have got it built now, and it's nearly built. So bag ten has, has only what four or five bags. So, um, although it's still in the kitchen table, it probably won't get built today. So yeah. maybe tomorrow. Yeah, I, I I have started building up a bit of a backlog recently. I say recently, I actually started the end of last year. I got the Batwing on day yeah. one, or I ordered it on day one. I don't think I, we got it on day one because we've been in lockdown since, like, forever. It took ages and, uh, it, yeah, it came, and I was super excited to build it right away, and I haven't built it yet. Oh, and I keep buying more Lego sets. I've got Lego in. Jargo City, City, City Gardens, yeah. Uh, uh, I've recently built Welcome to Apocalypseburg, finally. Um, but you got the two pirate ships. Yeah, I've got some. I haven't got all the Pirates of the Caribbean stuff built yet. That was a series that I was hoping to finish in 2020, but yeah. <laughs> you really got into parts of the Caribbean sets, didn't you? Yeah, I mean, it was a theme that I really wanted to. Um, to to get but it, it happened sort of during the, the last years of my dark age so by the time i got back into lego it was all over yeah. and the sets are stupidly expensive especially here in in the uk compared to america i mean i think it's just down to the fact that there's less sets in our country because we're a smaller country but yeah. the price of like a pre-owned pirates of the caribbean ship in the uk you can get a brand new one for that price in the states so god yeah 
But uh, with, the, yeah. with the Lego Movie Two as well, I didn't get all of them because I thought they'd be hanging around the shelves for ages. They're oh. still on the shelves in Target and everywhere. I see like Lego Freak going shopping, and they're there, and it's like. Uh, they're not here anymore. They're just not available over here. And then they're like crazy prices when you do find them. Yeah, yeah. Swiss had a few ones on after them. Yeah, I, I got the, those two, the Sistar um, ship and another one. They were I got the two of them for uh, 40 quid. Like they were, one was 15. And like one was normally 100 quid. I got that for 25. Wow. That's Ooh. insane. Wow. Yeah. Do you say quid over there then? Because obviously in Ireland, you've got euros, haven't you? Yeah, but we all had pounds at the same time. So Ireland had pounds, uh, UK had pounds. So we've we've always just said quid. Like my granddad said quid, and it's always just come down. So no, I don't think any other European country says you know anything you know, like that for their old no. money. Uh, my, nano, my nano always used to say Bob. Yeah, my same over here. I mean, <laughs> like, th those traditions didn't really stop, you know, because well, Ireland's an independent country, like only a hundred years. So mm. like. You know, and if you think of the age of most granddads over here, they're probably like 80 or 90. So it, all the traditions are going to be the same. We say Bob. Well, we don't. The younger people don't. My my dad used to say 20 Bob and 15 Bob. And you'd be like, who's Bob? Who are you talking yeah. about? Yeah. I think the only time I hear it being said now is like um, some, sometimes you have the saying, uh, give us a kiss and lend us a Bob. Oh, really? You know? <laughs> yeah. So, like, you know, it's basically like uh, give us a kiss and give us and lend us a fiver or something, you know? So, yeah. That's but, yeah, it's not particularly common. Anyway, I just realized we've got a bunch of people here that I need to say hello to. So let's have a quick look over in the chat and see who we've got joining us. We've got Fen Morton. We've got Nicoleta mm -hmm. Lazaric. I always say the name wrong. I really apologize, but they're always here. Great to see you. We've got Perks. We've got Land of Sweet, Jelly Bean. We've also got Icy Dead People 35. We've got H. Smith Productions, Lego Madness. We've got some guy called Sai O'Connor asking for a link. I don't know who that is. Uh, we've got Matthew Munson, uh, 501st Bricks, uh, Jack, Zach Al, Brooke Hamilton, Sam the Lightning Marvel fan. And I think that's about it. I hope I'm missing anyone out, but great to see you on. Asian Studios just popped up saying hello there. Great, great to see you all here. Thank you so much for joining us. So, Mrs. Crackle, do you want to break into that box and start yeah. building? Yeah, I'm going to get the knife out. <laughs> this is going to be fun now. I should, probably should have opened that up off stream. Probably. Yeah. There you go. Do you know, when I'm not building on stream, I like to try and sort the bricks first. But when you're on stream, it's just too much faff to sit there, you know. If I've if I've opened a bag before we've started the stream, you know they'll all be sorted. But if we open a bag on stream, it's just a pile of mess. And, and and the space can be limited as well. Yeah, that's very true. I mean, I built this desk myself using a kitchen worktop and some legs I got from IKEA, I think. Yeah. Right. And you know, cut it to fit the sort of alcove of this this part of the, of the room. And it's fantastic. I love it. But the problem is, it's not particularly deep. If that makes sense. So when you're trying to like sort pieces out in front of you, there's only so far you go before you start hitting the wall. <laughs> so I, I am curious though. Have you ever done a like a, a room tour of your your studio setup? Because it always seems to be that one angle of you. Well, that's the new angle. Like on this side here is all Funko Pops. So if you have a Lego channel, people probably won't be interested in seeing a whole load of Funko Pops. And then just let, the, there's a window on this side. Yeah. So literally I've taken this side of the room and then on, we're, we're a point over that way, there's like um, Ikea storage boxes with loads of Lego sets in them. Queen Amidala is sitting in uh, the Gungan sub over there in a oh. box. So have that to, is going to be one of the best Lego Star Wars minifigures they've ever made. Yeah. I just hope they don't decide to reissue it. <laughs> See, you um, hope they don't. I hope they do. I, I really know. It. It's so expensive now. It's insane. Mm. But that set is actually a pretty decent set. I, I think, is it Ryan? I think reviewed it fairly recently or re-reviewed it. I think it was the second one he had. Mm. And I was surprised at how well it seemed to hold up because last year, as well as getting the, the Pirates of the Caribbean, I completed the entire theme. I also bought um, a Lego Clone Wars set, Cad Bane Speeder. Oh, yeah, that's good. <sighs> really? I didn't like it. <laughs> well, no, I like, I like it to get Cad Bane. I don't buy minifigures on their own. I, if I want a minifigure, I'll buy the set. 
Because I don't want people yeah. touching my yeah, minifigures. God knows. Yeah. Probably pass through a dog or something at some stage, you know? <laughs> <laughs> Who knows? Very rarely do I buy minifigures on their own. I used to, when I first got back into uh, into Lego, I used to pretty much buy just minifigures and small, like, 999 sets. Yeah. Uh, and I did, but m nowadays, if there's a minifigure I want, half the time it works out better value just to get the, uh, the entire set. And, you know, it wasn't a bad set, but it, you know what? It felt so basic. It felt like I had traveled back to, like, 1962 or something in terms of building techniques. But the minifigures were great. So I, I, I especially love Kaz Bane. He's a great character. Because uh, I, I, last year I binge-watched all of Clone Wars, so that's why uh, I decided to get that set. But you know, I, it's something I must do. I haven't watched any of those animated series, and everyone is saying you have to watch them. I'll, I'll just, I don't have the time, you see. Yeah, well, we watched them whilst I was on furlough last year, so <laughs> that's the reason why you know I had the time. The missus was working from home, but it was tough, I will say that, because the first couple of seasons aren't great. There's a few gems in amongst those, but overall, it's a, it's a tough struggle to get through. And, you know, I hear that so many times, like, oh, but it gets better with lots of series. And in this case, it definitely is true. But I just think, why couldn't they make it good from the get-go? I've seen so many videos and fan theories saying, oh, they purposely made it bad so that when it got good, you appreciated it more. It's like, well, who would do that? If it wasn't for the fact that it was made by George Lucas, it probably would have got cancelled after season one. Do you know what I mean? Exactly. It's like opening a restaurant and giving you rubbish food, but it'll get better. <laughs> Come back, come, back, come back in March, it'll be great. Open the hotel and you've got, you've got the pool, but there's no water in it. Just wait until it rains, then it'll be perfect. <laughs> what? Yeah, I, I don't know, but it, it is really good. Uh, Rebels, we watched then again, was it end of last year, start of this year? Yeah. And that was good. A lot of people said it was better than Clone Wars. I don't think it was, but I did enjoy it. But again, the first season and or two... It's just tough. It's yeah, just to get through them, don't we? yeah. But we did. But I'm glad I did. I'm glad I, 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 cause I know now the backstory and stuff like that because I was trying to explain to someone else that there's like generations of Star Wars fans, and mm. like my generation was kind of like the '90s, early '90s. So we had we were like the generation of the special editions, the expanded universe, all the books of like Shadow of the Empire, the Thrawn trilogy, the original Thrawn trilogy. And then there's a generation that came after that that sort of had the tail end of the prequels and the Clone Wars and stuff, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And now there's a new generation that thinks that The Last Jedi is the best Star Wars film ever made and basically their lives are wasted. <laughs> <laughs> it's true, though. I mean, they, they look back at their very first movies and they're going like, wow, that looks so old and the, the special effects are rubbish and, you know, they've read all the stories of how Darth Vader's voice was made and you know, the magic is gone for them. Whereas when we saw them, we were like, Oh my God. Oh my God. That's amazing. Yeah. I, you know, I don't know how it happened, but as a kid, I somehow, I can't remember what, what, how old I was, but it was when the special editions came out was really when I got into star Wars after, yeah. after I'd seen them all the special editions, I remember I had seen return of the Jedi on TV before. Mm -hmm. Because I remembered the whole sequence with Jabba's palace and, uh, you know, the bit where c says to R2, you're playing the wrong message. And I remember, because I remember to my mum and going, what was the right message? And she was, no, that was the right message. She's just saying that because he doesn't want to be given away. And I was like, eh? What film is this? What was this about? Like, you know, I had no idea. All of a sudden there's Care Bears running around throwing spears, you know. <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> but, yeah. It, it, it's funny because... I, I remember the big reveal of Darth Vader being Luke's father. And I I feel privileged that I went into the films not knowing that. Yeah. I don't know how anyone else could nowadays. You know, it's it's such a part of pop culture. And it's just like, it's just common knowledge, you know? I mean, it was the shock. It was like, what? How? And then trying to figure out how as well was like... Yeah, I mean, I remember one of my friends when we were kids was like, but he's a robot. He's like, no, he's not a robot. <laughs> You know, <laughs> you know, Empire Strikes Back. At one point, you even see the back of his head, don't you? When the, you see yeah. it, but yeah, one of, my, one of my friends was convinced that he was a droid like C three PO, and was like, "How can a robot have a kid?" You know. And when you're that young, it's kind of confusing as well because, like, you're kind of going, "But what?" And it's space, but like, how can it happen? And yeah, but 
I don't know. I feel like we lived in a privileged time. Hundred <laughs> percent. Uh, Brooke, Hamilton wants, Brooke Hamilton wants to know: Is I building anything? No, I'm not building anything. But I did build this on a Lego Friends stream yesterday. Um, Ooh. Pretty cool. So it's a Lego Friends set. It's um, a fashion shop. But I'm gonna take out the mini the mini dolls and make it into a mini figure shop. So it's pretty cool. I mean, that'll fit into a city. It looks yeah. pretty much like the older kind of style of uh, creator three in one sets, and it was really good and fast to build. I was able to build it on a full stream. Hey, <laughs> yeah, that's really really good. it takes me ages. I've heard before that many dolls, and I need to try and do this myself when I actually you know get a city. Is that the mini dolls look really good as like in store mannequins? They're here, yeah. Like that is like that's obviously. What... I mean, that's what's in the window. Full screen. Let's see. Wait a sec. How do I do this now? I haven't been on stream yet for a while, so. <laughs> the new guy. <laughs> see them there, Americans there. Yeah, I think even if you had the, the legs just without the heads, or if you is is there such a thing as a plain mini doll head? Have they done that yet? You know, like how you can get plain mini figure yeah. heads. I haven't seen one, but that that'd be cool. Like there's one. Like that freaks me out. That's. Uh... <laughs> Just get some acid on it. it looks like someone has dolled you upside and made you into a mini doll. <laughs> <laughs> the great thing is, these hair, the, the hair fits well, uh, fits properly onto a minifigure. Yeah, so you've got a whole load of cool mini um doll hair that will fit brilliantly onto a normal minifigure. The only thing I, I'm not keen on, on mini dolls sometimes, the hair pieces, is, is when they're really rubbery. Yeah. I mean, I get it, but sometimes, like, I don't know, like the texture goes right through me, you know. Like you, all, it, 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 you don't like it? No. I have, I have, a, I have a friend who, uh, I don't see him anymore, because uh, we, we were in school and you drift away, but um, he hated the feel of Kiwis. Really? Just freak him out, yeah. And then there was another guy who used to hate the sound of cotton wool being pulled apart. Oh, hmm. my word. I had a friend who used to cringe and had to look away when I used to put my crisps in my sandwich. Really? Why? I used to sit on the benches, like, you know, and I have a pack of crisps and I have a sandwich. And if, you know, I didn't do it all the time, but, you know, if I fancy the bit of crisps, what I do is I open the sandwich up and I just put some crisps in and then you flan it down. It's like, it's a like crisp sarnie, isn't it? It's a, it's a traditional staple of, I think, of the UK and Ireland. But he yeah. used to go, oh, no, he used, it used to be like if I was, like, you know, taking a dump in someone's mouth or something. He was <laughs> revolted by it, honestly. It was Did so you put butter on your bread? Sorry? Do you put butter on the bread when you put the crisps in? Yeah, well, I mean, the sandwiches, because we were kids, like, you know, we were, what, 11, 12, were made by my mum. So they were proper sandwiches. They were buttered, and they normally had, like, you know, a slice of ham or chicken or something in them. Yeah. Um, and I, I think what it used, used to be is if I had, like, chicken sandwiches and I had roast chicken crisps, I used to go really well together. And, yeah, he used to proper – he goes, why have you got to do that? That's disgusting. Oh, I can't even look at you right now. <laughs> and he, I was really freaked out by it. That's <laughs> like, hilarious. I know. I know. I mean, I think that's something. I, I'm, I'm sure it's the same in Ireland as well, but it's definitely something in Britain. And we put anything in bread and butter and call it sarnie. Bananas. Oh, absolutely. You know? Yeah, Lorraine loves. Um, she she likes cheese and onion ones in uh, in in a sandwich. She puts butter on her bread. I like salt and vinegar uh, crisp sandwiches with no butter on it. I think they're amazing, and I have to have a cup of a coffee with it as well. Yeah, I mean. My mum used to love having sugar sandwiches. I've heard that before. <laughs> Bread and butter with just a little sprinkle of sugar over it, and that would be a snap for a sandwich. It's I've heard of people having a toast sandwich, which I think is insane, but apparently it's really nice. Okay. <laughs> yeah, so you get you get a toast, you wait for it to cool down, you put yeah. that two slices of bread and butter, and people say it's delicious because it's different sort of textures. Yeah, I suppose it makes sense, yeah. Yeah, I just want to quickly say hello to a few more people I've seen popped up in the in the chat. Cool so, uh, I think five hundred first took issue with me saying about the last try because I know they like uh, the last <laughs> try. I'm sorry about that. It was just a just a playful joke. We've also got just build it here now. We have monkey mine, monkey mine, monkey man nine two five five. Hello. We have. Uh, I think you said hello to Brooke Hamilton. We got someone called Lorraine Fox O'Connor. Who could that be? I wonder. <laughs> welcome, welcome. Never heard of her. We have uh, Brickish. We also have who do I see else was here? Christopher Mitz, Christopher Mitzva, who is a, a channel member. See how he's got that lovely beard next to his name and it's in green text. I should say that if you want to become a member of Cut the Craggle, you too can 
have the beard icon by clicking on the join button below there's a whole heap of other uh, perks available we also do some uh members only live stream that was, I was that's why i was a bit thrown at the start because i was trying to think when was the last public live stream we did because we did one i think either last week or the week before but i was members only it was a lot of fun, <laughs> that was quite fun. and uh yeah <laughs> unfortunately it did get copyright strike because we were playing lots of music <laughs> and also i'm the, the lightning marvel fan i'm not sure if you were here earlier but hello they said they had a doritos and cheese sandwich with butter hmm. yeah i should say for our american audience when we say crisps we mean potato chips that's what they're called well, here you in the can uk have chips in the sandwich as well yeah we do chips yeah we do have chips though we have fries mm -hmm. no, well, no i don't know about french fries but you know the skinny ones but definitely chunky chips we have oh, yeah chips. amazing oh, and we're in a baguette or something oh yeah oh yeah i mean it used to be with weather spoons that when you ordered the fish and chip meal you used to get a slice of bread and butter on the side to make a chip butty do you remember that yeah yeah I'm gonna have to get a charger back in one second if that's okay. Oh, no worries. I thought I'd last. <laughs> <laughs> so let us know in the chat what is your favorite filling to put into a sandwich? I'm sure there's gonna be like a whole heap of stuff. I mean, it is the most important question in the universe. Just think in Star Trek when Scotty finds out that a Spock is from the future, he says, Do they still have sandwiches in the future? Sandwiches, are, sandwiches important. are important, mm -hmm. so let us know. Love to hear from you, and I'm sorry for the the terrible plug of my memberships. I'm working on it. Uh, <laughs> last time I had some people help me out by uh, <laughs> House, of, House of Bricks was great. <laughs> he he was, he, he was amazing at selling my memberships. So much better than I am. <laughs> oh, I think I heard sorry. Did you come back? Yes, I'm back. And we're hey. all back or charged up. I was just asking. <laughs> Let us know what they uh what their favorite sandwich fan is. I'm trying to think what's my favorite sandwich. Ah. I'll tell you my most favorite one, right? Okay, super bread with um no butter but cranberry sauce, roast chicken, and stuffing. Amazing. And black pepper. That sounds quite nice. That sounds quite nice. I mean, we used to have it didn't happen because of COVID, but we normally have a Christmas market here in Cardiff, and they have some food stalls, and one of them does like a, a like a like a half baguette, and in it it has turkey stuffing, cranberry sauce. You can also have gravy on it as well. The works is that absolutely is gorgeous. Or you can also have gravy on there. Maybe extra pork with crackling on top as well. Oh, fantastic! Oh it's a feast. Yeah, I love sandwiches. Although I gotta say, my favorite food is pizza, though. Uh, as Mahan says, there, I thought the most important question is, "What is your favorite cheese?" That is, <laughs> I don't know if I've ever asked those questions. So I think I must have done. You but did. I think we were on with um, with Brickitect with Greg, and I think that's one. They were the first two questions you asked. It was, "What's your favorite cheese?" And then there was something else. I think it was, "How fast does a goose fly?" or something strange. Oh, oh the, 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 the three questions. Yeah, I think we asked you when you were on a uh, bricks and bricks with us. That's right. Yeah, the, the three yeah. most important questions. You could, this is what you ask, right? If you really want to get to know someone, you have to ask these three questions. In fact, in my members only Discord, I've put on there that when you join, you have to answer these three questions, although only about two or three people have actually answered them. So number one is, what is your favorite cheese? Number two is, what is your favorite dinosaur? Oh, dinosaur. That's and number three is, what is the ESP velocity for unladen swallow? I knew it was a flying bird. <laughs> it's a flying bird. I was kind of like bombarded with all this madness in, in that stream. Oh, what's he talking about? <laughs> <laughs> oh, uh, Lorraine says that bananas. I used to love them and put it in the toaster. A toasted banana sandwich. That's Ooh. that's interesting. I don't think I knew that, and I know her a long time. <laughs> I know. I, I I felt like you 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 were familiar with her. Strange that you don't actually know. Do you know what, Craig? It sounds kind of gross. Maybe I blanked it out of my brain. <laughs> Okay. I just can't figure out how it works. Do you put the bananas in the toaster, or do you just? Have it, it must be one of those um, sandwich makers, maybe. Oh, oh yes. Now, do you call those brevels, or is that just a UK thing? Call them a what? Brevels. Oh, um, I, I, yeah, no, we don't. But um, I know where you're coming from. We just call it a sandwich maker. But like you guys, we call every vacuum cleaner a Hoover. Yeah, well, originally the only brand of sandwich toaster you could get, like in the '80s when they first came out, was a Breville. Yeah. So we used to call, and we used to call what they made brevels, and then the breville itself became a breveler. 
So oh I still, to this day, that's what I call them. But I'm most people get get it. But some people, I think the younger generation are like, what, you mean a toasted sandwich? And I'm like, well, yeah, but a toasted sandwich to me is like basically just a sandwich made with two slices of toast. It's not yeah. like compressed, you know, one that you get, you know. It's almost like a trouser press, isn't it, for sandwiches? <laughs> <laughs> It's like waffles. We call waffles waffles over here. They're made by bird's eye and they have potato in them. But in America, that's not what you get. No, a waffle is, is more like a, a sweet type thing, isn't it? Like you have like maple mm. syrup or something on it. Like 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 in um Stranger Things, Zegos. Those yeah. are, are waffles. They're actually they're was it who does it? Was it Warburton's? Warburton's, yeah. They do the toast and waffles, which are basically the. I mean, even over here, though. I mean, I'm sure you have this muffins because you have toasted muffins, and then you have chocolate muffins. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, you well, get your muffin, and you can have like an an egg, a fried egg in it, and then you can have a muffin, and it's chocolate chip. And also, what you must not do is go to a bakery, walk up to the female person behind the counter, and say, "Can I see your muffin?" <laughs> Absolutely, do not do that. Because you imagine you're like lit security. security. It's like okay, okay. If I can't see a muffin, can I see a baps? <laughs> oh, you're gonna <laughs> still call them baps. By the way, baps are like bread rolls. But again, I think it was my my nan's generation always called them baps. We used to call them cobs, crusty cobs. You know? Yeah, I've heard it. Yeah, we. we I I think both generations over here called them eat both the say the same. Like because yeah. a lot of um. Like a cob would be also brown bread, I think, over here as well. Really? That's interesting. Yeah. It's weird how some things change, like especially like, you know, with other countries that, you know, have English as their primary language, how some slang is, has changed to mean different things. Like the one I'm always bewildered by, and I really would love to know where it sort of split off and diverted into two different streams, is in the UK, Fanny is like you know it's quite a childish but derogatory term for a yeah a female front door whereas in america fanny is a childish term a playful term even for everyone's back door <laughs> so it's like yeah and i always get get, get annoyed because there's a sketch on family guy when the, the the british guy that they have that they have with the massive teeth and the yeah. accent he goes i'm going to wave my fanny at you i'm like well if he really was british he wouldn't be shown his bum then would he you know exactly exactly be like <laughs> <laughs> wow the topics of conversation we've burnt from already and we've only been going for like 28 minutes <laughs> <laughs> this is what you get on a cut the crago live stream we don't plan out topics and have uh you know a set itinerary we just talk about absolute nonsense but it just flows it does and, and the thing is we haven't spoken properly for a long time we were saying this yeah. just before the stream so when you haven't spoken to a friend for a long time you end up just you know go, talking about anything and everything i feel it's true. It's like when you haven't seen your friend for ages, and like I, there's a guy I, I'm, I'm friends with. I don't see him that often because he lives on the other side of um, of Dublin, really, and I haven't seen him like for nearly a year now because of lockdown. But um, when we do see each other, we go, we sit down for a pint, and it's kind of like, how's it going? How's it going, Grand? Yeah. And then you start just talking nonsense, and then the more pints come, then you just you get deeper <laughs> into conversation, religion, and this, and then it just goes beyond the pale, and you're like, uh -huh, I love you, man. You're great. <laughs> oh, yeah. Do you also, one thing I, I realise, the biggest part of being an adult is bumping into people you're friends with, saying how long it's been since you've last seen each other, and promising to not leave it as long between the next time you see them, and actual fact then leaving it twice as long, so each time it gets longer and longer. Yeah, and then the next thing you know, you're seeing them at their own funeral, or they're coming to yours, it's like, shouldn't have left it that long, now look at them over there in that box. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, by the way, uh, Landa Sweet's wondering why Mrs. Craggle is so quiet right now. Ah, uh, because I'm enjoying Craggle and Sly catching up. There you go. And she's kind of on the build as well. Yeah, because I'm probably needing to move this up, but it's really hard to see if it's brown on brown. Oh, yes, yeah, so it's the reddish brown on the dark brown. So it's really hard to see. I think uh, Mahan here has actually, <laughs> I think he summed up Cut the Craggle streams. Or just, just, just summed up me. If I'm thinking about something, then I have to say it. <laughs> no filter. <laughs> True. Yeah. I also think Lando was was very politely saying, "Shut up, guys. Let let Mrs. Craggle talk." Yeah. 
But I wanted to to ask you, like, I've been watching your live streams recently, and you've blown up as a as a host of live streams. It seems you've had some big hitters on there recently. Yeah, it's been a load of fun. Um, it all started when when Brick Clicker came on. To be honest, because that's that's what that to topic of conversation that we were talking about, like LAN and leakers and everything. Like loads of people kind of picked up on that, and then. I just asked people, to, you know, that I knew, do you want to come on? Do you want to come on? And the conversations have been brilliant. Um, well, the way I like to do it is the first maybe hour, half hour is to kind of let off steam. And if it's somebody that no one has streamed, like none of us have streamed with the people I've had on before, except for, um, well, I've streamed with Ryan and Just Too Good before for five minutes because he was on BFABs. But um, it was great to have, say, Jang on because um, none of us streamed with him before. And it was great for the first few minutes asking him questions and getting to know him. And, you know, he settled right in. He was like one of the lads after a while. And um, wow. it was just really good fun. But, yeah, I'm, I'm lucky that people are just saying yes. <laughs> yeah, really. it's fantastic. I ask people if they want to join my stream, and they pretend they didn't get the link on Instagram. So, <laughs> <out> of it. <laughs> so I have to hound them and say, yeah. sorry, get your ass on the stream. <laughs> I was sitting here going, oh, my God, oh, my God, where's the link? Do you know what's really annoying about this whole thing, though, with the link, is that first message I sent you was the link. But I'm get it doesn't show on my side that it doesn't send it. Like, if it said, oh, unable to send because of, you know, or outside or whatever. But instead, yeah. on my side, it looks like you've had it and seen it. And on your side, it looks like I'm, t I'm talking about a message that doesn't exist. It would literally was nothing there and then you, you try it again and it was like this message it was like disappearing message and i was like what 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 what's that mean yeah i just uh instagram has gone a bit crazy now i know i i i only thought about it at the last minute that because i've had issues now you can't send links now to people in america from the uk and vice versa so i remember on the christmas stream that bfab did he sent me a picture of the um of the link so i had to type it out oh my god uh, oh i think i know on the one time and the second time then tech had already got the link so he messaged it to me because he's obviously uk best as well tech productions so uh yeah but it's it's a bit daft apparently it's to do with the new privacy laws or something like that i don't know international oh interesting oh what's this this is one of the first times this particular element has been used in a lego set in a reddish brown color and it's this piece oh wow that's cool that they tell you that. Yeah, I've yeah. never seen that before. Have you? No, no I've never seen them point out that they've never used that piece in that club before. It's quite cool. Is that for the trunk, Mrs. Craggle? Yeah, it is. It's been the because I'm here. Oh. Ah, perhaps that's the camera, right? I feel like everyone of a certain generation, as soon as they saw that Lego was doing a bonsai tree full of karate kids. <laughs> yeah. um, it's impossible not to think of Karate Kid for me when I see a bonsai tree. I love a bonsai tree, but then... and then the other half is probably thinking of Cobra Kai, <laughs> which I've never seen. I, I still haven't gotten around to see it. Well, you haven't <laughs> seen Cobra Kai? No. Oh my word! You've seen Karate Kid though, right? Oh yeah, I love that. In fact, I, only, I watched that again. I heard the team tune for that about six months ago on the radio, and I said, "I'm going to watch that movie again." I watched it again. Plus, I, I, in my madness, I thought that one of the actors died, so I was like, "Oh my god, I'm going to watch that in homage." But they didn't die. It was all in my head. Oh, okay. Who did you think yeah. died? Uh, the girl. Oh no, no, she's she's still alive. Obviously, um, Miss Miyagi died a few years back. Uh, yeah. At Motisha. I think his name. I would say his name wrong. I think that's how I say it. But yeah, there. annoyingly they only've got they've only got the first one on the Netflix in the UK. So you can watch Cry Kid one and then Cobra Kai, but you miss out on two and three. And as mm. the seasons go on, they start to reference the other two films as well. So, yeah. but it's it's honestly it's fantastic. Like the the Cry Kid movies have always been a bit of a guilty pleasure. You know, they're really cheesy. But this series, without being pretentious, elevates those movies because it re-examines some of the events in a new light, and it just like it go it carries the story forward in such a fantastic way that I felt like each season has got better than the last one before it. Oh, Hold on. another one! Yeah, these never been used in Reddish Brown before either. This is weird. I've never seen a manual point out when a part hasn't been used in a certain car before. It's cool. I like it, yeah. It, it, it's cool because it, 
because if you're done a review of the set early, you can make out like you know you know lots about Lego pieces, <laughs> and then people <laughs> get the set themselves and like, hey, he just saw that in the manual. <laughs> I just usually hit a brick set. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, uh, so, uh, Mahan is going. Yeah. Sorry, what was that? Just in Mahan is heading off. Oh, bye, Mahan. Hey. And uh, yeah, so uh, it's not okay here. Hello there. Hey. But it, yeah, it was uh, it was really interesting because I watched. I think I've watched the last three live streams you did because you had Ryan on one talking about the LAN, and it was after he had, uh, you know, he had been removed from the LAN. And it's funny because I remember when I was on Bricks and Bits, the podcast he used to do with Justin and Greg. Yeah. And the week that they invited me on, Greg decided to go on vacation, so it was just me, Ryan, and Justin. And uh, one of the things when they were talking about was Ryan at the time was frustrated because he wasn't getting the sets the same time as other people like Justin were. When they did come, they were all mangled up, the boxes and stuff. And yeah. um, I forget the exact conversation, but I said that. I said, it's almost like you'd be better off outside the LAN to Ryan. And they both just went deadly quiet. You know, it was kind of like, I feel people have felt this way inside the LAN for a while, but they've put up with it because, you know, the, the sort of pros have, have outweighed the cons. But I feel like LAN have yeah. crossed the line recently and people have just become a bit disillusioned with it maybe yeah i mean if you look at um let's say we look at ash and flash for instance and justin just you good they were always they, they were primarily like you know we've got the news first and this is what's happening this is what's happening and that's where the channels were, were kind of for me that's what i look at their channels as like being like the first to know and you know Okay, they've gone on to do do reviews and do this and that, everything else. But I think it's terrible that they can't do what they've always done and what they're known for. Do you know what I mean? Because they don't actually. I mean, me, me, the two of us could sit here and talk about all sorts of things we've seen leaked and everything else. And you know, no one's going to come after us because we're not inland, so they can't come and tell us to stop. But um, I do feel I feel really bad for them. Um, you know, because it, it's literally shut up and that's it. Yeah, I mean, from what I know of, of of Justin is that like his like how his how his channel started and boomed quite quickly was that he was basically bringing Eurobricks to YouTube. So whereas yeah. on Eurobricks you had people with sources saying, "Oh, this set is coming soon," that so he would then bring that to YouTube, and people on YouTube almost weren't aware of Eurobricks. So he was kind of like, you know, that's how he brought the breaking news. So like you said, that's how his channel started, and obviously it's developed and grown as channel channels do. But to be able to be told that you can't do certain content, I mean, I get the whole not sharing confidential images, especially if you are you are Lego ambassador, but not yeah. being able to talk about like even rumors or yeah. talk about a picture that you've seen on the internet. I mean, it's almost like I, I said to this to uh, to Greg of Brickitect, I said, you know, they're going to try and copyright strike you talking about leaks that you've seen. I feel like, well, what are they going to do? Because, you know, if Cobra wasn't here, if you were in a pub, say, with your mate on a pint, and you were yeah. talking about something, could they come around and try and copyright your conversation, you know? That's it's, it, yeah. It, it's daft, and... I have heard they're going to try and stop people outside the LAN, but really, they haven't got a leg to stand on. There's no legal way that they can stop you talking about what you've seen. You know, they, what, they, what they should be doing, really, is stop not going after the people who are you know, talking about this and building up the hype. But if they're really concerned, you know, look at their own security measures and their own staff and figure out where the leaks are coming from and tighten that, yeah. not you know, sort of blame the messenger, if you will. Yeah, I mean, if if you really wanted to, everyone knows you can get like minifigures early from dodgy people on um, eBay. I mean, if you want er something early, you can just go look, look every day, and you're going to find something. And like, I'm not going to point at a factory or any particular factories, but these minifigures fall into people's pockets all the yeah. time that work there. They work there, and you know, you've, you've seen them on bedspreads. You know, it's like, a, and somebody brought up the point. Who was it yet last night on, um, or yesterday on one of the streams? Like, they were asking, where are these getting people? What phones are these people using? It's like they're using a phone from 1998. There's, the quality is rubbish sometimes. It's like, are you taking a rubbish photo on purpose? And how do you manage to get it so fuzzy? But yeah, I've, I mean, I've seen minifigures and I've seen sets just sitting on people's bedspreads and. You know, it's like how do you how do you lift a, a box that isn't even on the shelf? How do you get that out of a factory 
up your jumper or falling off the back of a truck. Their security seems to be really bad. Um, and as, as you said, like you can't stop someone talking about, I heard something, something. So if you're in LAN and you get something early, obviously you're not, you're not allowed to talk about it. And I haven't seen any of them doing that. And it, it's it, if, if somebody is on Instagram and they see a leaker put something up, you know, that's different. It's just a conversation. Oh God, I, I heard that this is coming. That's not um that's not somebody leaking out. It's just something talking about a rumor. So as you said, you can't go around the streets listening, going, I heard someone bust up talking about a new Lego castle. Let's arrest them or copyright them or Yeah. What? I mean in, in actually I was saying that if if you haven't signed a non disclosure agreement, yeah, really, how can they get you for saying anything? Because that's the reason we have non-disclosure agreements or NDAs, as they call them for short. Just basically say, look, you can't talk about what you've seen. Obviously, you can't do that when something is being leaked out to the public. But it's almost like, you know, what what do they expect? People have seen it. You know, they're going to talk about it. You want them to not talk about it, but they've already seen it. The cat's out the bag, you know? Exactly. It's like if you... It's like from now on, you can if you've seen something in a catalog or if you've heard a rumor, you can't talk about it until it's actually on the Lego website, and then you can go, "Hey, look, that's there." Even though everyone knows about it, um, it's bonkers. It's just yeah, you have to just pretend it's not there, even though everyone sees it. Like I think I don't know who it was. I thought I think it might have been Bricks that had a picture of a a. Um, of a page, I think it was for the Eternals, where a a brick set member had found one. What's that? Oh, it's the froggies. They're oh, cool. It's the big frogs. Oh, this is the part that I was excited about. Do you know the easiest step in this manual? There's actually a step for opening the bags and mixing them together because you do not want to tip this over. Oh my word! Look at all the loose studs. <laughs> Wow. So you do a little salt and shake, basically. <laughs> basically. But yeah. I will That's, really cool. That's really cool. And I'm going for the spring ones because we'll use these frogs. Yeah, I get what's not okay is saying. They said that, you know, from a, a corporate perspective, the leaks are difficult, but it's the restrictions on predictions of possibilities that I think is the real issue. Yeah, because they're saying that you can't even like I feel like they didn't want Justin and especially Ryan to do like prediction videos of what sets they think are gonna come in the future. And I get the the sort of bone of contention with one of Ryan's was that he was saying it was a predictions video, but he had already seen leaks of the set. So it was like, you already have that information. But he didn't get that as part of being the LAN. He got them from the internet, which everyone else has access to if they know where to look. So, yeah, it was yeah, just... And, and he's usually spot on on what might be coming uh, like he, he'd look at like okay well this hasn't been released in five years so maybe we'll get this version of this and you know it's you know he works out the numbers and is usually able to figure we might get this i mean that's just working something out so it's not actually leaking anything and it's yeah. as, you, as you said it's it's predicting which means this could happen he did a he did a video, a video last year i remember which was kind of like the sort of the start of this before it even like snowballed in you know in 2021 and I think it was, I forget the exact video, but it was a rumor list. And at this point, it was just rumors. Like he said, he'd, he hadn't seen any of these sets, but he'd rumored. Yeah. But he used pictures of mocks. And one of them, I think, was the mock of uh, the buildable Baby Yoda. Right. And uh, they co they copyright striked it. And he knew that he could fight it because it was a mock. It was someone else's you know custom build. It was not an official image. But I think he took it down just to sort of maintain the relationship with you know Leg or the Ambassador yeah. Network. But it shows just how much that they're they're sort of tightening their grip, and I feel like they're tightening it on the wrong people. You know, you need to, you know. I think they're just doing what is easy. It's easy to go to you know people that they have some sort of say or that you know some sort of like control over and say, right, you can't do this anymore, as opposed to looking at their own like you know staff, their factories, and figure out how this stuff is getting out there. Yeah, I mean, like you can't. That information does get to everybody and it does get to like official, not official, I don't know how to say it. It gets to leak um, YouTube channels. So if you look at, say, um, I'll use BrickTicker as an example, he gets information, puts them up, and that's that. But people are going after him saying, oh my God, you're a leaker and um, you're not getting in trouble. But 
it's it's coming from Lego themselves, and you know people like Brick Clicker and all the other guys. They're not inland, but it it's it's. I don't think they should be trying to make an example out of um, Ryan and Holly and everybody else. They should be looking at themselves a lot closer, really. Yeah, absolutely. You know, um, because they're just doing what they've always done. Here's something I heard. Here's information. And I think, Pete, I think the leaks are important to hype up sets because, I mean, we find out these this information. And for months, then you're going, oh, my God, I can't wait for this set to come out. And, you know, I mean, you saw all of us on... Um, we were all on text channel uh, on the 1st of March, all waiting to get the Amelia, or not the 1st, the 6th or whatever it was, to get Amelia Earhart. And we all knew she was coming before they announced it. And, I mean, the amount of hype and everything on for all of us that day was brilliant. And yeah. if you just waited and on the 6th of March, whatever, whatever date it was, look to go and buy something, you're not going to be sitting there at 12 o'clock at night. You're going to go 1 o'clock in the day or 2 o'clock and go, oh, there's a new promotion. I think I'll buy that. It doesn't... Yeah. It, You'd get, I'd say you get less sales. I mean, you, a good example, I think, was the uh, what was it? The Aston Martin DB5. They only officially announced it either on the day or the night before. Because I remember going into the Lego store and I was like, "Have you sold any?" And they were like, "We've sold two. He said people just don't didn't know it was on there unless they like on YouTube or they got the email. I think some people don't even get the email until like this evening. I I got the email later than, in the day, like eight p.m. when the story closed. Yeah. And it was just, you know, and there had been rumors of that set already. And I think they had leaked, but not massively, you know, what not, you know, a few weeks. It was quite late in the day. And it goes to show that without that build up, without that buzz, it's kind of like a non event. Like, yeah. what do you think? People are going to announce on the day the set is out now. And everyone, and it was like, it was a weekday as well. So people have work and have school and stuff, you know, it was, yeah. it was just daft. You I remember mean, when I heard they heard about the leaks for um, Hidden Side, and it was I think one of the the way one of the descriptions was spooky set number one, spooky set number. And I was like, oh my god, they're bringing back uh, monster fighters, and then yeah. we found out that it wasn't, and it was something completely different. I was like, oh my god, it's something completely different, and it's new, and it's spooky, and it's brilliant. And without that, you would have just seen something in in the Smith's website, and you would have gone, oh, that looks good. Yeah, especially with Hinside, because let's face it, the box art on it didn't do the theme any favors, did no. it? You know? And I feel like without that hype, maybe the first wave wouldn't have done it even as well as it did. I mean, I'm I love Hinside. I I have no sort of like I, what's the, I, I don't get involved with the app. I have uh, seen it in use. I think I used it once with Mrs. Crackle. She played it a few times, but for me, I just like the sets. And yeah. I like I like the the lore behind Hinside. I like the story. In fact, I've basically done my own fan fiction series, the Hinside World Tour. You know, which started off. I had the ideas of what if they did sets based on, you know, monsters and ghosts and creatures from you know the the world uh, mythology and stuff. You know, yeah. the supernatural. But honestly, that theme was Craig. When you were when you were doing that, did you did you think to yourself, okay, well, this is good. It's my idea, whatever, whatever. Or did you think, I wonder if Lego will see this and say, hey, you can't make your own story out of our story? Were you kind of a bit nervous about that? I wasn't. No, it didn't actually cross my mind until I think it was like the second or third uh, video I did, and then someone said, like, you know, oh, what if Lego? have a go at you for using their characters and i was like it's fan fiction fan fiction has been around since like the dawn of dial-up internet probably even before then but that's when it started i remember i mean a long time ago i used to be a proofreader for a website called the four stop net and it was and it was the biggest star wars website i don't even know if it still exists but it used to be the biggest star wars website and it was unofficial it was done by the fans and there was a whole section on there for fan fiction and people used to submit fan fiction, but it had to, it was so good. It had to be proofread by, I think, two people that before it was allowed on there to make sure that, you know, it was okay. And it wasn't like, you know, halfway into the book, it was just profanity and stuff like that, you know. <laughs> and uh, I used to read, proofread fan fiction on, on there. And that was like basically dial up internet with AOL, you know, welcome to AOL. You've got mail, you know. <laughs> Mom, get off the phone. I'm on the internet, you know. <laughs> <laughs> I, when you were doing the proofreading did you read that stuff and get interested in it or were you just in job mode this is the beginning of the book blah 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 okay you need a comma there and you know what how did you do it i uh 
I mean, I was a volunteer, so it wasn't like I was getting paid for it. But I, right. I used to, it used to depend. Some of them, I'd be like, this is so boring, but I have to proofread it because you can't deny something for being boring. Do you know what I mean? Uh, but, yeah. but one of them I remember was basically there was a series of books called Dry Apprentice, and they were set before The Phantom Menace. And they were about Obi-Wan Kenobi and Qui-Gon, their apprenticeship um, and their adventures before The Phantom Menace. And one of these books was basically... What, like that one book had ended on a cliffhanger, and then the follow up then had gone in one way. And this person had writ uh, or wrote, sorry, um, three books that were a trilogy as if some if it had gone like a different direction. And okay. uh, I remember like I got the first book to proofread, and I really wanted to read two and three, but they had gone assigned to someone else, so I had to wait until they had been proofread and approved and were available. But it was, it was like. The quality of the writing was fantastic. I was like, who wrote this? It if it, it reads just like the books do. Like they've got the tone, the sort of sentence structure of the author. I think it was Judd Watson was the author, I think it was. Um, right. I'm probably getting that wrong. It's been a long time. But, yeah, so sometimes you get really into it. And the problem is, I mean, I'm sure most people can relate to this, but when you're into something, your mind sometimes autocorrects stuff in your head. Yeah. So as a proofreader, I've got to be check, checking for spell mistakes, gram, and that kind of stuff. And like sometimes, if I'm really into the story, I would read a word as it's meant to be, but not as it actually was. So I miss a typo, so I have to go back then yeah. and make sure that I have covered that. So that was dangerous. It's almost better if I wasn't that into the storyline because I could actually proofread it, you know, <laughs> better than uh, than if I was actually into the story. And then did you go and look and try and find those books to 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 buy them, or did you just? I've read them and um, that's it. No, they were the interesting. Weren't they were just they were just free on. It was just all the fan fiction was just free on uh, on the website to read once it had been approved on there. So it wasn't like you know you bought it or anything. But yeah, oh. you know I I get what you're saying though because I remember there was a thing a couple of years back and it very quietly got hushed over. And I think this is because Disney actually people don't realize but Disney have a huge stake in especially in the American press in American you know news and stuff like that so they can kind of like push topics in a certain direction but they were on about trying to stop people cosplaying characters based on their intellectual properties so stop people cosplaying as anna and elsa mickey mouse star wars marvel and it was like are you kidding me and they were like well technically they haven't got our permission to, to make costumes and go to comic cons as these it's like it's free advertising, You're, and it's also bite in the hand that feeds. These are your fans. You know what a horrible thing for a company to do. go. Hey, we want you to enjoy our product, get involved with our characters that we create. Uh, we, you know, you love them so much, you want to dress up as them. We're going to tell you you can't unless you get our express permission. Uh, and some of those costumes are better than the ones you'd buy in a shop, anyway. Oh yeah, absolutely. <laughs> yeah, but yeah, it did happen. They were looking into it, and it. It was an uproar in the sort of cosplay community at one point. They were like, how are they going to enforce this? Are they going to have, like, are they going to make comic conventions, you know, say you can't have characters come in based on certain, you know, properties? You know, Warner Brothers aren't doing this, so can you come in as Batman but not Iron Man? As it was, yeah. it fizzled out. They quickly sort of, you know, sort of dropped it. But it was so bizarre to think that it got to the point where it had been leaked. And there were documents and stuff about it confirming it that Disney were looking into the legal possibility of stopping cosplayers dress up as their characters. Wasn't it um, Puzzle Wood? Yeah, actual fact, we encountered it ourselves because we used to be cosplayers and go to comic conventions and stuff. Mm. And um, I used to do cosplay photography as well. And we were going to go to Puzzle Wood. It's actually in Wales. And it's the forest where they filmed the sequence in the force awakens where kyle ren captures ray yeah and us and a bunch of other of our cosplay friends wanted to go there find the spots where the scenes were filmed and sort of recreate them you know in, in our costumes and stuff and take photos oh my god that'd be amazing and a few of our friends had been there already and had done and had done just that when the trailer mm -hmm. came out and they recognized it and they knew that it'd been filmed there so we were like, oh, yeah, and they were like, yeah, go there. It's perfect. Now, the Puzzle Wood is technically, it's not like a public-owned national park. It's it's a private, you know. So we, well, I, I emailed ahead just to confirm that it was okay to go there, and they'd said they'd had a cease and desist order from Disney 
that they weren't allowed to let people in Star Wars costume in Puzzlewood taking photographs because they would see that as a breach of their copyright. That's stupid. It's trees, for God's sake. Yeah, so you couldn't <laughs> go to the location where it was filmed as a Star Wars character because you get you you it, it, they would try and sue you basically. That's bonkers. Like, I mean, what? It's, it's only the old people in suits just coming up, or, or executives that haven't done anything for a while going, Oh, I'll have to think of something quickly, or else the boss will fire me. Let's do this. It's you know. just so, isn't it? Because you think these are the fans. Like, you know, you imagine, like, if you're at a Comic Con, you see all the characters, like, Oh, that's great, you know, and then you're more likely to go and buy a product then because you've seen yeah. the characters. You know? It gets the excitement going, it makes you happy. It's like, Oh, I remember. Seeing this guy dressed as Kara is awesome. I had this great lightsaber. Do you know what? I'm going to go buy a lightsaber. Now. I, I can't make the whole costume, but I fancy you know turning a lightsaber around. It's why would you want to stop that? You know, it's yeah. you know companies spend so much money on advertising on billboards and TV commercials. You've got a fan who's literally spent their own money, their own time making a costume of that character, going around, brighten up people's day, having this positive impact on your brand, and you want to put a stop to it. Do, do you um do you watch um Bake Off? I don't know. Uh, you uh, Daisy was on it the other night, Ray. Oh yeah, yeah, terrible cook. Oh, my God, <laughs> <laughs> I've seen the clip of her trying to do the rap. I think it was on some sort of like chat show where they do like a rap, and she just blah 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 because she just mumbles the words. It's so bad. <laughs> <laughs> it's so funny. Um, oh. yeah, no, that was a good one. Um, do you watch any shows like that? Like uh, any, like, um, like Bake Off or the ice skating one or anything like that? Not really. Um, I, wa I watch, I like watch from QI and stuff, but we don't have like terrestrial TV. Uh, we don't yeah. have an aerial. We rely literally on Netflix, uh, Disney Plus, YouTube, and Blu-rays. So yeah. sometimes we have to have a little bit of a wait because they've taken a load of shows off Netflix now that were on there because of this whole BritBox thing. I, mean, I don't know if you got that in Ireland. No. But like, a lot of the UK channels have got together and like stuff like that was on Netflix that they had on their UK shows and now on this own streaming service. That's why Doctor Who's gone. Okay. Yeah. Oh. yeah. Taskmaster, I think, is on there as well. Do you ever watch Taskmaster? Um, what's that? It's with Greg Davies, and basically he has like a, I would say five, is it five? I think five, like five each series, he has five guests on there who are normally comedians as well like him, and he assigns them tasks to complete, and these tasks can be utterly bonkers stuff. Like there'll be a river, and you have a trolley full of stuff, and you have to get the stuff on the other side of the river in the fastest time possible but like the bridges are like miles away each direction so you have the step he's trying like they're tossing the stuff over the river or they're wading back and forth trying to do it or one guy is like trying to like make a pulley system using branches and stuff you know? oh, right. <laughs> or, there's, or there's one like um they had uh eggs and they have they have a golf club and they have to get the egg around this course in the fewest amount of strokes um, without breaking the egg, you know, or if they break the egg, they have to start again, or something like that. It's <laughs> and who own, who is is that BBC owned and it was on Netflix or? Um, it's it used to be on Dave, you know, Dave. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but Channel Four bought the rights after the ninth series, and um, what happened then is that it was I think I think it was on Netflix for a little bit, but now it's gone to BritBox, so. Yeah, it's just I'm getting fed up of having so many different streaming services. Yeah. I used to like when it was just Netflix and everything was on there, you know. Yeah, I mean, I your life was just like Netflix and you didn't have to worry about anything else. I, I'm glad that Star wasn't an extra bit of money onto the Disney Plus. Oh, yeah, I was saying before, like people were saying, Oh, like I cancelled Netflix just to have Disney Plus, and I was like, How before Star? It was so limited, you know. I like Disney stuff, but in terms of the variety of stuff on there, it was so narrow yeah. star has expanded that a lot i think it's made it a lot better value for money but there's still stuff missing on there which is random um, yeah um, like, die hard isn't on there oh is it not i i, I was looking for deadpool 2 i thought that was supposed to be on it and i didn't see it there and deadpool is still on netflix which is weird yeah i i think some of them i think what's happened is that they've previously signed license agreements with other streaming services so they have to wait for those to lapse before they can have them on there but it's really weird they have every die hard including the, the two terrible ones but not the first die hard movie it's uh <laughs> i tell you what it's really weird is i've been 
re-watching Family Guy on there whilst I, you know, I've been working from home. Yeah. Uh, from the first few, I have them on DVD anyway, but I've been watching them just through ease of binge watching on Disney Plus. And it's so funny to think they have all the Disney jokes to in there. The ones where they call, you know, they say that Disney hated Jews. There's one yeah. where... The, um, the, the Disney kind of animated uh, family guy. I haven't got to that one yet, but I, there's been other ones. The one that maybe I couldn't believe was on there is they say, oh, this is worse than how Walt Disney got his big break. And it's got yeah. Minnie Mouse there, like, taking her dress off, going, do I have to? And he's there going, you want to be a star, don't you? Take it off. And he's there drawing her, you know, as she's taking her dress yeah. off. So like that, I'm like, oh my god, they have this on Disney Plus now. Like, you know, it was already kind of like, oh my god, when it was on Fox, but they have that. But you know, they took out one scene, and I don't know why they did this, but there was a thing um, with Family Guy where they did three episodes, a free parter, and then Fox released it as a DVD movie. They called it the Family Guy movie, the untold uh, story of Stewie Griffin. Right. And um, in a later series, then they're having a yard sale, and you see the DVD cover for the film on there. And Lois picks it up, and she, I think she says, like, Stewie Puffin, the untold story. Wait, this isn't a film, it's just three episodes put together. What a way to, you know, to cheap, to, to, to cheap off the fans. And then these Fox executives come and bundle into her van and, you know, drive off with her. That scene has been cut from the episode. Oh no like, way! It passed off the scene. I was like, "Look!" I was like, "Watch that copy there," because in the in the shot you can see on the table the yard sale, the DVD copy. And when it gets to that scene, it cuts to the next scene. I'm like, they cut that out, which is like sort of slagging Fox off, but they leave all the Disney jokes in, all the anti-Semitic stuff left in. Yeah. <laughs> the, 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 um, the Simpsons did that as well, just before Fox was bought as well. Um. Selma and um, the other sister were outside and they were they were going to light up a cigarette and they said, oh no, we can't do this anymore now that Disney own us. <laughs> so yeah. <they> <laughs> There's a couple of jokes like that. In, uh, I think they said, like Disney are going to buy the world and stuff like that in uh, yeah. Simpsons and Family Guy. It's, it's, it's bizarre to see that stuff. I'm glad it's on there because, you know, the thing is with Disney is that people don't i don't think necessarily realize that they have been doing other stuff for years it's only in the last 10 years that they kind of canceled anything that didn't fit the the you know the, the, the disney family brand because disney owned buena vista which used to do you know films that weren't necessarily aimed at kids or families they mm -hmm. also owned miramax which did pulp fiction and kill bill one and two so it's a bit weird but then all of a sudden then they cut they cut rid of buena vista they got rid of miramax and uh, they kind of basically said that everything has to sort of fit under the Disney, you know, code of values or something. Yeah. But now, once they've bought over Fox, and people, I think, have been kicking off about it, they're like, hey, just give it to them. <laughs> God. How many, <laughs> um, how many subscription services do you, do you, are you signed up to? Uh, at the moment, just Netflix and Disney+. Plus. I can see Jack has said how many are there now. There's a lot more in the U.S., in the UK, I think there's Netflix, Disney Plus, Now TV, which is a joke of a one because it's it's owned by Sky, so it's there's all different packages within it. Um, there's Amazon Video on Demand and BritBox, I think, are the ones. Yeah, yeah. How many? Well, have you got a tree. I, I only I subscribe to Disney Plus, um, Netflix, and. Amazon Video. Amazon Video because Picard is there, uh, Walking Dead, two, the two Walking Dead um, kind of spin-offs, and there was another, oh, The Boys. Um, but oh, yeah. if, they, if they weren't there, I wouldn't bother with Amazon Prime, to be honest. Yeah, Amazon Prime is a, is a... What I hear about Amazon Prime is how much stuff is on there, and you click on it, and it's like, you have to pay extra for this. You know? Yeah. It's like, I've, I've used it, but when I've had a free trial, like, we had a free trial, and we binge-watched The Boys... <laughs> On there because the voice is fantastic it's oh, probably great. the best thing they've done on there but they don't yeah. I, I find it weird I, I mean i'm not a trekkie but i was talking about this um with a guy sam jones who's a member of the channel um and uh, he's into star trek and i said it's weird though to me that you have picard on amazon prime video on demand yeah. and then star trek discovery is on netflix yeah on Netflix as well. It's like you know, you think if you're gonna have like two Star Wars series, they'd be on the same platform, you know. I'm I'm not sure if one is 
um, owned by Roddenberry Enterprises or something like um, Gene Roddenberry's son. And I think the other one is owned by CBS or something. I can't remember. Because, yeah, you're right. I thought like everything would, would just be in one place because most of the Star uh, Trek stuff is on Netflix. And then... You know, with Picard, I'm still, I'm still kind of figuring out what Picard is all about. It's so slow. Like you know, when I when I used to watch Star um Star Trek: The Next Generation, each hour, well, forty five minutes, but each hour would be like a movie. You'd be like, oh my god, that was brilliant. And now, when you watch some, even when you watch some movies now, you're like, God, there was more content in an hour of a video, you know, of a um of a of a TV show, because some of the Star Trek movies you were left afterwards going, God, like. You could have packed more in. <laughs> yeah. I mean, my, my knowledge of Star Trek, and I've said this before, is is limited. Like, I watched the reruns of the 60s, the original show, as a kid with my my, my, my parents. Yeah. Um, they were on BBC Two, I think. I watched one or two episodes of Next Generation. It wasn't something I ever really got into. And I saw the occasional end, uh, episode of Enterprise yeah. when it was on Channel 4 before Smallville. But... My main sort of knowledge of Star Wars, of Star, Wars Star Trek, rather, sorry, uh, comes from the films. So yeah. that's how I, I know Star Trek, is I know if it's not in the films, I don't really know much about it. But uh, yeah. yeah, like I remember first contact, I remember thinking was absolutely the bee's knees. Like I enjoy Generations. I know Generations gets a lot of hate, the last one yeah. with uh, with Kirk. Um, I enjoyed that one. And then first contact came out and I was blown away. We were, as a kid, we were like, oh, this is awesome. So excited for the next Star Trek film. And then the next one came out, I think, was Insurrection. Yeah. Oh, my God, did that suck. <laughs> that, that felt like a TV episode. It but made that... no sense either. If you're like Star Trek, you would be like, okay, that makes no bloody sense. It makes no sense whatsoever. Um, the, the the inconsistencies as well in continuity. I was like, but like we've seen data do this, we've seen data, and you know you're you're going like that was easy to fix. It's like obviously people who made it never watched any of the old shows because they left so many things out. Yeah, I I don't even remember that much about it. I remember that um oh what's his name? Geordie has to take his visor off because his mm -hmm. eyes heal whilst he's on the planet. Yeah. And I remember that Picard has like a semi romance with some woman who I just remember got on my nerves. But I remember like the poster when it was first revealed had the Enterprise going over this planet and this giant face like in space looking down on it. And I was like, what the hell is this? This is going to be awesome. That never happens in the movie. There's no giant face in space. You know, well, nothing like that. Uh, I mean, what was it? What was the one after that? Was it Nemesis? Nemesis, Nemesis wasn't bad. I didn't mind that. It was weird though because it felt like obviously I didn't watch much of the series, but it felt like you know, as a film viewer, you were just getting into the sort of next generation crew, and then that was their last hurrah. It was yeah. weird, you know, because you watch generations where but you know it's the handover from Picard to Kirk, then you have first contact, which is fantastic and like great, awesome. Then you have insurrection, which is like terrible. And then you have Nemesis, and it's like, oh yeah, we've been doing this for ages now. We're going to end. It's like, wait, what? You've been doing it for four films. <laughs> you know? Did, did yeah. you ever watch? Uh, did you ever watch Stargate? Oh, I oh. loved Stargate. Yeah. Mrs. Crackle here. Uh, this Stargate. might be where she speaks up because she <laughs> loves Stargate as well. I do. One of the best TV shows ever. And, like, I really like the ancient astronaut theory. So, like, I watch a lot of Ancient Aliens, the TV show. And a lot of the stuff they've already covered in um, Stargate. Yeah. From the 90s. Yeah. I mean, you you even like uh, the spin-offs and the two terrible seasons of Stargate, don't you? Well, the two terrible seasons of Stargate, not so much, just because... They don't have Jack O'Neill. Yeah. It's like, you can't have Stargate without Jack O'Neill. Sure, I've got the box sets of seasons one to eight of Stargate SG-1, the main TV series. And in the special features of season eight, they talk about how this is the last ever episode, how it's the, the series finale, not just the season finale, and how they, the, the ending is, is pretty much perfect. By that point, the budget, I think, had already diminished a bit, and Richard Nan Dean Anderson had sort of you know, lessened how much he was in the show. But he wanted to go out with a bit of a bang, and I really liked how they tied it in because they revisit the first movie in that episode yeah. without going into too much spoiler territory for those who haven't seen it. And it felt like a proper conclusion. You, had, you know, I had some things that were still open, so you can imagine other teams having adventures. But for these characters, 
their stories were finished. And then, like, a, less than a year later, they were like, oh, we're bringing it back now for Series 9. But obviously, the guy who played General Hammond had died, so we got a new yeah. general. Jack O'Neill's not going to be in it. So we've bringing in two of the people from Farscape. But it was just like, what? <laughs> what is this nonsense, you know? Mr. Crowder, did you like the very last... Um, I can never remember what the last Stargate was called. It was after Atlantis. There you go. Sam Jones just yes. said, what are everyone's thoughts on Stargate oh. Universe? Hated it. It was trash, trash, poo poo. The problem is, it was quite slow. Like with Stargate, you have this ongoing story, particularly obviously with the Goa Old. And with Universe, it was just okay, they've gone into a space and they're, they're just lost. Well, for me, I was never a fan of Atlantis. And I know that's pretty much heresy to say. If you're a hardcore Stargate fan, you love Atlantis as well. But for me, I didn't like Atlantis because all the characters felt like they were checklist in characters from the main show that you had to have like the sort of maverick colonel you had to have the sort of you know the teal a teal type character which was jason momoa before he was aquaman and um or, or conan or whatever or carl, or carl drogo and um i didn't get into it but i remember when we watched the first episode of universe it's pretty much the exact same setup as atlantis where you know, the team gets struck, they go to a new place for the Stargate, but they end up getting stranded there. But while they're there, they're rediscovering new technology and they start to make it their home. It was literally the same storyline as Atlantis. The only thing I remember spoke to me was Robert Carlyle was fantastic in it, but he was like the only one in the show that was acting when I watched it, you know? Yeah. I agree. No. To me, it, it ends with season eight. That's how I liked it in my head, canon. That's how I end Stargate. But you did have um, Jack O'Neill does appear in Atlantis. Yeah, I know, but there was one episode I think when they, you know, when they did seasons nine and ten, it was an anniversary episode, and it, it's a sequel to a previous episode. Because the previous episode, I forget exactly the mechanics of it, but this normal civilian starts having these. Uh, these dreams oh. Oh, that one. <laughs> Stargate, and he writes the stories of it and uh, it ends up becoming the tv show i think it's oh. called wormhole extreme That's yeah awesome. and they allow it because they say it's the perfect cover if anyone uncovers anything about stargate program in the future they're like wait that was the plot of this terrible tv show that got cancelled after one season yes, so but then what happens is I think the show gets a cult following, so they decide to make a big budget movie. And the guy can't think of a storyline for the movie. So he comes to the you know to Cheyenne Mountain to, to ask them what storyline you know should he do for the movie. And Jack O'Neill comes back. And what's funny is that every time one of the characters has a idea for the story. It like shows it, and it's normally a clip from a previous episode, or it's uh, it's an episode like that's slightly tweaked. When Jack O'Neill says his version of the storyline, oh, I think it's when Jack O'Neill says his version, but one of the versions of it is done with puppets like Thunderbirds or Team America. <laughs> but the best bit comes when they're trying to think of how to end it, and Jack O'Neill then basically recites the ending to season eight, turns to the camera and says, let's face it, anything after that would be just pointless. <laughs> And I was like, yes! I was like, it absolutely was. Like, they should have just ended it there, you know? <laughs> Sam Jones is on fire. He, he obviously knows a lot about this. He knows his stuff. I mean, he starred in a great science fiction movie, Flash Gordon, so... <laughs> really? <laughs> oh, do you know what the other... Another good one was um, when... Um, what's the actor's name? Anyway, Homer was in it, but it was the guy who plays Homer. Do you remember that uh, one? Um, uh, what is his name? Who plays Homer? Um... Dan, oh my god, what the, what's the voice actor for Homer Simpson? Who? I can't think. Uh, Why can't I remember? So, I, I, anyway, yes. Yeah, so um, they, he was he was having um, he was having these kind of premonitions. I think it was, and he. I think he thought he could tell the future or something, but um, yeah, I just remember listening to him going, God, I know his voice from somewhere. Now, obviously, I was like 20 something when I was watching it, and it was the guy who plays Homer Simpson, was, and he actually did because Jack O'Neill was a big Simpsons fan, yeah. and this this civilian was actually um, the actor who plays Homer, and it was Dan Castanella, that's it, yes, exactly, yeah, yeah, that yeah. was a good. I'm trying to think of that one. I don't remember it. I can't remember. I probably. It's funny. Like I remember the first time I realized that um, 
Milo Kunis was the voice of Megan in Family Guy. <laughs> and I was like, mm. wait, I know, I know this hot, attractive woman's voice. And I somehow have this feeling that the voice belongs to someone who's not very attractive, you know, <laughs> <laughs> which is the, the joke. She was on, a, I think, on a chat show, a chat show rather um, last year, I think, or the year before. And I, it was Graham Norton, I think it was. And he said, like, you know, you're talking to me right now, but I'm really sorry. All I can hear is Meg. And she goes, I get so sick of that. You know, I'm there and I'm talking to someone. And all of a sudden, they just see their eyes glaze over and they go, shut up, Meg. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> Oh, yes, yeah, Sam Jones definitely knows his stuff. He, he said it's Dan Castellana. I'm probably yeah. saying that wrong. But, yeah, you know, he knows his stuff. And Sam Jones also is a member of uh, Cut the Crackle. In fact, I see a few members here. We've got Christopher Mitz, Sam Jones, IC Deputy 35. They're all members of the Cut the Crackle channel. Yeah. And you, too, could be a member as well. You just have to click the Join button below. There's two tiers available. You have the Beard Buddies, which is 99 pence or 99 cents in the US. And that gets you access to our members only Discord, where we talk about all sorts of stuff, not just Lego, but anything and everything. You also get, uh, I think it's six or seven now, new emojis, custom emojis that only members can use in live streams. And actually, uh, one of the members used it in, uh, in a regular comment on a video, which I didn't even know was possible. And then there's also Craggles Club, which gives you access to members-only live streams, uh, a monthly vlog series, and also members-only polls as well. So be sure to yeah. check those out. There you go. That's my uh, <laughs> that's my uh, that's my plug done. I'm terrible at this, by the way. So <laughs> you need to record a house, doing it. I know. Just I had. I had do, you know, do you know House of Bricks? Yep. Yeah, I had him on here, and he was fantastic. He was really, really good at uh, a plug in my memberships. I think he got me a couple of members. I, I met him. I think I met him on here with you before. Yeah, probably. Might have even been the Diagon Alley streams, maybe. We had a bunch of different people coming in and out of those ones. Yeah. Now, Chris fun. says, my favorite running joke is that every time they would get a new ship, he wanted to call it Enterprise. <laughs> <laughs> I remember when oh what what the is it oh the Asgardians? Yes, yeah. Asgardians. Sure. Yeah, when they name a ship the O'Neill. Oh, yeah. Because they love Jack O'Neill, like they really like him. They're the ones that look like the sort of stereotypical alien that you oh, see like in Area fifty one sort of merchandise. And uh, I was so gutted when the O'Neill got destroyed. And then yeah. they got another one, and then the, the second O'Neill got destroyed as well. And I was like, for crying out loud, stop blowing up the ship. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, leave the ship alone. <laughs> Do not blow up the O'Neill. Yeah. No, I... yeah I've, I've been threatening to re-watch all of Stargate lately because oh. I have to do I have the DVDs that's how how long I'm a fan of them I don't have them on blu-ray but like I've got um yeah I've got all of them up in the up in the attic because there's no yeah. room I, 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 ha I have them but I think they're around my parents still in the attic uh, yeah. but I have the DVDs one well I have one to eight the seasons that count you know my sister yeah. has all of them <laughs> I heard though that they did a, a director's cut of the you know, the TV movie, the pilot, Children of the Gods. Yeah. Because I remember that, this is like, you know, again, before the internet was proper, like, you know, up and running really well, and you could access all this information easily. I remember going to a local video rental store. It wasn't Blockbuster, but it was like that. It was like, you know, just a one-off one. And seeing a new Stargate movie on the shelf. And this is before, like, it was actually on Sky in the UK or on Channel 4. And I was yeah. like, what the hell? And I looked at it, and I was confused because it had a different actor playing O'Neill. From the yeah. picture, it looked, like, it looked like it was the same actor. It looked like um, James Spader. Obviously, it was Michael Shanks. And it was, and it was called on there, Stargate SG-1, The New Mission. It wasn't called Children of the Gods or anything like that. It wasn't. didn't say that it was... You know, a TV movie or a pilot for a series. So I just thought it was a new film that I somehow had missed. And we rented it and I loved it. And then I was like, okay, but when's the next one out? Because it ends obviously on a bit of a cliffhanger. And it was about a year later, then they came on Sky. Then they actually came and it was a series. And I was like, oh, right. Okay. So obviously it was the. But why we had to wait for so long in the UK for that, I don't know. I was trying to explain to someone how, how long it used to be to wait for a, a, a video to come out. Like, oh, come on. The Phantom Menace came out 12 months after it was released in the cinemas. Yeah. It's like, nowadays, it's like two weeks. Mm -hmm. in, in Children of the Gods as well, there was a, a kind of a, a raunchy scene as well, if you remember. 
Yeah, oh, there's, she's there's... stripped completely naked. Isn't yes, she? that's yeah. what I, that's what I was going to say. I, I've heard there's, a, there's like full frontal nudity in one of the scenes. She's Apparently, completely... in the director's cut, they cut that out. What? So that that, that, you... That's the cut in the director's cut. Yeah. What? Apparently, because he apparently he says that nowadays it's not really appropriate, like in the, in the current climate, which like you know, I guess you could argue is correct, but it just seems a bit strange. But I always wondered, like, what was the the thought process behind filming that? Because Target SG One was always meant to be like probably not so much a family show, but definitely sort of like you know evening show. It wasn't meant to be like R rated, yeah. but they filmed a scene with full frontal nudity for the pilot. Yeah, it was weird. Yeah, it was, <laughs> it was so weird, you know. Because I was, I, I was like you, I was obviously living at home at this at that time, and I was just kind of going, "Wow, I'm glad I wasn't like you know innocently watching something." And then someone walks in, going, "What filth are you watching now?" It's like, "What? It's it's me." <laughs> one of my one of my cheer me up films. I used to watch this when I was living in university. Whenever I was feeling homesick, no, no, it has nothing to do with my home, but it's just, it's just a film that cheers me up. Is um, Zach and Mary make a porno? With Seth Rogen and Elizabeth Banks is directed by um, Kevin Smith. Never and it's, heard of it. yeah, it's basically um, this like these two friends live together, man and woman live together. They've been friends since high school. Nothing romantic happened between them, but they have like zero money, and they come up with the idea of making a porno for money <laughs> after a school reunion. And and they're terrible. It's so cringy. But there's a scene where they're filming this porno, and it's. It's so bad. It's hilarious. Like he drop, he's trying to be a milkman coming to a coffee shop, and he drops the milk, and it goes everywhere. He goes, "Oh no, I have got milk on me." Anyway, <laughs> I'm watching this scene when they they shoot this scene in in the movie, and my dad comes in the house. He's like, he stands there for a second, frowns, and then says to me, "This is crap. If you want some decent porn, just ask me. I got a ton of it upstairs." <laughs> <laughs> I'm just like, right, okay, thanks for that, Dad. This isn't actually a real porno. It's a, it's a comedy film. It's uh, you know, just, <laughs> just like. <laughs> Ten minutes later, craggles up in the attic. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, Sam Jones knows it. It's it's a great fun. It's a it's a film with a lot of heart in it. I think a lot of people dismiss it just because of the uh, the name. But oh, Mrs. Craggles finished. Bonsai is finished. Beautiful. That looks awesome. Yeah, oops. yeah make sure it gets Oh, wow. So that actually comes up. I thought it was attached to the, uh, no, the wooden right base. The There's a wooden base. It looks like a Kit Kat. It does look like a Kit Kat. Yeah. Put that bit in. It's a Kit Kat. It's quite cool. I like that. And obviously, bag four is the green leaves then. Yeah. And it also actually shows you. Oh, yeah. I'll show you the manual here. It shows you switching between the two. Which, if you're saying that the treehouse is going to take ages, that looks a lot easier than the treehouse because the treehouse you literally have to take every leaf off mm -hmm. and change it out. Whereas it looks like here you could have these made and just switch them out with the frogs. Yeah, and then it's got these cool little other ideas of what you can do for the bonsai. What? Yeah, I've seen the one with the car um, arches. All right. That's cool. That's cool. That's brick separators on one of those. What? Yeah, isn't that a fantastic? Ah, look left. There you go. That's insane. Yeah, it's quite cool. That is really cool. So yeah. what would you rate this set out of ten? A ten out of ten. I mean ten out of ten. I mean the the frog bit was quite hard because as it says here, there's a hundred and one frogs. Which is the most has been in a Lego set. Wow. And um, yeah, use all of them. Oh, it's quite cool having I really pieces. like the frog piece. I know it sounds weird, but our Lego pieces, some pieces I just like, and the frog piece I just think is mm. is pleasing, you I know. The pink ones now. Amazing. And they use these ones which are made for plants, these ones. That's cool. Yeah. I, well, when we were at Lego House, we, they went on a tour and they said they aim eventually to have all their plastic made from plants so that it's all biodegradable plastic, which yeah. sounds fantastic. But at the same time, you also worry that it might mean that your sets start decomposing after a while if they're not in the right <laughs> conditions, you know? I, I think the idea of that is to make plastic in a better way, I think it was. I don't mm. I, I I'm still not sure that they they're making it better or easier to recycle. I think that's what somebody I think it was Brickset or somebody picked up on um, that it it they're using a more economic or not a more environmentally friendly way to make plastic. 
uh, yeah. from plant products. But I don't think it. Cha- I'm, I could be wrong. I don't think it changes the the biodegradability of it. Is that a word? I made up a word. Um, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it sounds like a real word. You had me fooled. Yeah, because like, at the moment plastics just don't biodegrade. That was the thing. Like apparently, um, there's a unless it's a brown brick. Yeah, <laughs> then they just snap. But there's a what was it we watched? We watched a program on on Netflix that was talking about the plastics and the problem because you know that once they're made, that they're just there. They don't break down, and um, like the whole plastic island. There's actually a couple of plastic islands off the coast of America. Um, and they talk about you know Henry Ford. Obviously, you uh, made Ford cars. Yeah, he was actually developing a plastic. I think that was com- that was based on uh, what was it? Um, was it corn or something like that? Or wheat? Oh, right. It was something. But basically, he was de- he was looking to develop a plastic that would have been. That had an enzyme that would break down when it, you know. So once you, you know you want to get rid of it, you didn't just put it in the landfill site. It would it would actually break down, you know. And what happened is World War Two started, and they moved away from that because it would have taken too long to look into and to make. So they went with the other plastic, and we've just carried on with that sort of route ever mm-hmm. since. And it's only now that we have these problems with you know plastics that don't go away that we're now looking at how can we sort of get stuff and now i think they're trying to develop enzymes to break down plastic that we have like in the oceans like that yeah, i think that's, it's, it's scary, that's good, scary uh, enough as it is if you're going along in your canoe and the next thing it's like oh my god it's like those little nanites in, in stargate trying to get you ah! <laughs> well they said there's an island somewhere like you know i can't it's, it's, i say off the coast it's probably miles miles out but like from uh, los angeles like if you went los angeles and went uh, west kept going before you got to China. There's an island there that is the size, I think, of the United Kingdom, and it's just yeah. plastic. That's crazy, uh, it's scary. It's, it's so bad. Um, yeah. it's, not, it's not okay, says it is a real world, a real word. Woo! Hey, I mean, that's actually kind of disappointing because you could have like copyrighted that. I know. <laughs> and then every time Lego used the word, then you could have sued them. <laughs> We could come to an agreement. So going back to the land a little bit on here and trying to link it back uh, to that, I remember, like, you know, as a Lego YouTuber, I think everyone was thinking that, you know, the one thing that you would love to get, what you would feel like, oh, I'm an accomplished Lego YouTuber now, is to get in the LAN. Yeah. And I applied um, end of 2019, start of 2020, and I fully intended not to get into the land. What I was hoping was to get an idea of the process of applying and get some feedback from them, you know, so I'd have a direction of how, you know, to, to go, to, you know, yeah. to see what they were looking for. As it was, they took ages to get back to me and then sent me a generic response, which I think they sent the exact same one to um, Frickitect and Brixar, apart from they added one line, I think, to each of theirs. I didn't get a personalized line. <laughs> I just got the cookie cutter one. But I, I feel like a lot of people now are not interested in land at all now because of that. It's lost its uh, its luster. Do you feel that way? Would, would you still want to be in the land or? I haven't met a person yet that's like in, in the group that said they wouldn't want to be in it really. I will apply. I'm, I like, I'm, I'm in the process of applying and I know that one or two other people that are on the panel that I have on a Thursday, they've said that they want to apply as well. So like, that's what 10 on the panel. And out of that, there's maybe six people who said they want to apply. So it hasn't put anyone off, but it it would affect you if, if I was, let's say if I was, I keep bringing brick clicker into it because he's kind of one of the best known um, leakers. He wouldn't be able to get in, I wouldn't say. And he wouldn't want to because his channel and his everything is, you know, relies on um, that kind of news. Um, and yeah. where any news I do, all I always check it out with Brickset first to see if it's there. Um, and if it is there, I, I send them a message. Is it okay if I use your pictures? They always say, yeah. And um, that's what I do. So me joining land wouldn't affect me in the slightest anyway whatsoever because you know i that's i like to review stuff i like to do my own kind of thing and you know kind of jackass around sometimes in videos so yeah i'm, I'm going to apply it's it's and I, I've, I've been listening to everything everyone has said and i understand you know it's 
like for Justin and and everyone else, it's the belief that they have. They, they believe that they shouldn't be told they can't say this and they can't say that, and it is affecting their content. And they're right. I mean, you know. And if Justin goes and says, "I'm leaving," I'd support him. I'd say, "Yeah, you're right. Damn right, yeah. leave." Yeah, because John, I think it was more of a shock with Justin than it was with Ryan, because Ryan's always had that little bit of the bad boy of the Lego YouTube community, a little bit of that persona about him. Not in a negative way, but just like, you know, he does his own thing. He doesn't you know go by anyone's rules but his own. Yeah. And I know that, you know, one of the things he said was, if I'm in the land, I'm still going to tell you if a product's crap or not, you know? Yeah. Whereas yeah. Justin, I don't think like, you know, I'm not, I'm not trying to say that his you know, integrity wasn't there, but I always felt that he was more of a fan of the Lego to the point where, you know, he, he would sort of be like defending some of the stuff that you think, oh, that's a bit sketchy. And you go, well, actually, yeah. no, you got to see it from their point of view. And, you know, and it was like the other side of the argument. Whereas I noticed in his recent videos, he seems to, I mean, even you mentioned once where he said, like, if this is continue, I'm going to have to look at whether or not I stay in the land. Yeah. And I feel like that's got to be a big wake up call when someone has been your champion for such a long time and they're now saying, hey, hang up a bit. You're, you're controlling my content. I'm not happy yeah. with this. I feel like Lan needs to wake up. The problem is, though, is that Lan's always going to ha want to have people, have people want to be in it. Yeah. So, well, don't forget. I mean, it, it's 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 horrible to say, but in every business, um, there's always going to be somebody to replace somebody else. So, mm. I mean, you know, they will look at it and just go, "Well, yeah, let's look at who the new M or Productions is and find him, and let's look at the new X Y Z and get them in." And like, I mean, I don't, I haven't heard anyone like i'm glad you asked that question because i think like a lot of people have been like you know f you lan f you lego blah blah and i haven't heard anyone openly saying i'm going to apply and i know that there's one there's myself and someone else who are applying right now and i have no problem saying i'm going to apply because th those issues aren't going to affect me and they won't affect me in the long run and if it did um i can't see it how because all i do is do the live streams review some stuff that i like you know so video i like video and i've reviewed video that i know they're not going to get like hundreds of thousands of views it just won't because i think people have killed it before it's actually gotten any chance same with um hidden side i think people tried to kill that off oh technology and lego doesn't work oh don't buy it it's rubbish. and no. i was like no give it a chance lego are doing something brilliant here Give it a chance. If you don't like the app, forget about it. Look, it's Lego. It's it's a play set. You can do this. There's cool minifigures, new molds, new heads. But I don't know. Yeah. I mean, again, with video, like, I feel like it's overpriced. That was my big uh, bugbear, if that's the right term. I, I don't know where I got that from. I, don't right. think I, I like uh, it, though. <laughs> weird. And, uh, <laughs> like, the, the one issue I had with it. But when Amazon had the beatboxes for 11 99 I, I, t I talk about this in a, in a, in a video that is going to come out um, next week. But to me, that is perfect because they're almost the equivalent to the Ninjago Battle Pods or the Arcade Pods. And they were $9.99. Now, we had $9.99 for the Battle Pod. Then they did the Arcade Pods. And suddenly, we, we got an extra minifigure, but they were still $9.99. Now, at $11.99, you're paying £2 extra. But you're getting only one minifig. But with that, you're getting those printed tiles. You're getting, obviously, lots of new molds. And even though I won't reuse it, you're getting the app and those music rights. To me, I feel like that £2 increase and the deduction of a minifigure, you know, down back down to one, is okay. That's that's a fair price. But 19 99 or 18 99 I think it is, is ridiculous for what they are. Yeah. Ooh. Is that fishy? Hey, fishy. Little fishy. I really like that. It's quite cute. At least we're a goldfish now. You can be my <laughs> I'm kind of conscious at the fact that we're talking a lot, and this is labeled as Mrs. Um, Craggle Builds. <laughs> <laughs> and we, we're just jabber, jabber, jabber. I mean, technically, she is building. I am building. <laughs> I'll be honest. I wanted to have a stream with you just to catch up with you because I feel like it's been ages since we talked. But um, some people might know this, but I'm not very well at the moment. So I was not in no fit state to build. And I you didn't know that. Bonsai tree. So I said, why don't you build? And I'll, I'll have a chat with, with Sai and uh, catch up. Yes. Um, so people get that visual stimulation of Mrs. Crackle's <laughs> lovely hands building. And then they get put off by me talking nonsense. But, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, I've had, I didn't know you weren't well. 
Yeah, I've I've had uh, a couple of uh, Corona tests and. Uh, yeah. Oh, I did know that. Yes, yeah, sorry, I did. You you were. I think you said it on live. Oh no, you said it in Sarah Starbuck's live stream. I think. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I was actually in the car. <laughs> I just had the yes. drive through test. And Sarah couldn't figure out what a, a drive through um, test was. It's literally what it sounds like. The only difference is, is that when we we had the information beforehand, they said they might ask you to wind down just the window of the person being tested, and then they test you for the window. But in actual fact, they asked us to keep the windows up. They, I had to bring it down just a crack, and they sort of pop the test through, and then you pull over to this like area, like if you were waiting for an order in the drive through you know, and yeah. you do the test yourself, and then. Originally, you're supposed to go to a second um, station and they, they test off you. But because we went and it was quite quiet at the time, the person came over and they used like a litter pick, you know, the claw thing. Was oh, yeah. They used one of those to get the uh, get the test off me. So, and like, did you did you like actually? I I, I couldn't imagine myself sticking that thing all the way up. My, how far do you know to go? And like, what if you pop your your back of your eyeball? It's gross. <laughs> <laughs> like it's like Total Recall, you know the original one, Varney, when he thinks that that the tracker out of his nose, and it goes like, oh, blah, blah, blah. And like, did, did you actually put it all the way up? Like, is there a marker on the stick to tell you no, where you your maximum nose? So you feel resistance. Yeah, you know, don't you, stop, you, you don't sort of stop? It. Don't push any further. It wasn't Craggle doing that. Was me? Though. Yeah, she did. Uh, Mrs. Craggle did the test for me. So, but that's okay. But what's what's messed up though is that you put the same swab. That you t you swab the back of your throat and then you stick it up one of your nostrils. Yeah, the same swab. It's not like an ear thing. You don't use one end and then swap it around and then oh, use the other. It's the same oh, one. Same I mean, I guess that it's good that you put it in your throat and then your nose, not your nose <laughs> in your throat. But yeah. Oh, that's gross. But do, do you know what I I I don't understand? Right now. If it's so, I know it's contagious. I believe in the whole thing. I'm not one of these people going, oh, I don't believe it. But if it's that contagious that, like, you have to stay two meters away from a person, you know, why can't you just cough on that thing <clears throat> and then give it to them if it's that contagious? Surely, do you know what I mean? Yeah, I, I, I'm not sure how the test works. They also, they've said that the test isn't 100% accurate because I, I was asked to have a second one because they thought the first one might have been a false negative. I know people who've had false negatives. Like, um, I think, yeah, Shai said this already, but Shai and his family got coronavirus. But literally a, a day or so before they were showing symptoms, they had a test come back negative. Now, the right. thing is, you have it in your system for about a week before you start showing symptoms. So at the time they had the test and it came back negative, they would have had it. So... Right. It's such a, it's, I feel like it's such a new virus that there's so much conflicting information going around that it's, it's <laughs> difficult. Like, I'm, I, again, I'm not a conspiracy theorist. I believe in the virus. I know people who've had it. I, I sadly know people who have, who have lost their lives because of it. Wow. Um, but it, it is, it is difficult to know what is right and what is wrong because there's so much different information and the information is changing as well. Um, mm -hmm. But it, I guess this we're, we're at the dawn of a brand new virus. I guess this is what it's like with other viruses that we, we it's just that we're so used to everyone knowing, oh, that's measles, that's uh, meningitis or whatever. Do you know what I mean? Mm. It's yeah, it's different. Yeah. It's Lego Madness had one in school and has to get them, has to have two more. Yeah, I know some schools apparently are doing like um, mm -hmm. random. Yeah. tests like to make sure but then i heard someone says they're supposed to be random and he's had a test four times since going back to school and his mate hasn't been tested once and i feel like i get the random spot checks but then surely that's that that's a gap in the system if someone can go you know not have a single test whilst another person has four of them you know this so, well can i ask you a question mrs craggle did they have little pink brains they do yes oh. they? this one has a little one by one brick and this one has a two by two Ah, cool. They kept I, that thing. I love that in Brickheads. They put the pink brains. I remember the first time I got a Brickhead and I said, oh, this is like the brain. And I was building in the same room my mum was sat watching telly and she was like, you what? I was like, yeah, look at the pink one. It's like his brain. And they're like, that's purely a coincidence. They just put that in there. I was like, no, I feel like they put that in there, you know, for the experience of, hey, this Brickhead has a brain. And she's like, well, they haven't given it a stomach, have they? You know? <laughs> and Homer got a different colour brain, didn't he? Or a smaller one. I think he got a one. He got it with the same with this in the goldfish. I think. Confirmed though. I, I remember when the designers confirmed it is meant to be the brain. You know? Yeah. Yeah. Um. The, it was. Um. Oh God. Which designer was it? It was the Portuguese guy. 
Um, I'm really I bad. Know. At these. I, I know Justin Ramsden because I've met him, and yeah. also I remember the TV show that was following him applying for the job years back. Oh, Marcus Be Bessa. Oh, okay. Um, apparently it was his hobby, and uh, he was making them for his friends and brought them into work, and they were like, hey, they'd be pretty good to sell. And um, that's where that came from, apparently. Cool. Speaking of something similar to that, what do you think of... Uh... Oh, hello, we got a guest. Yeah. Hello. hello. Say hi, Mrs. Craggle. And say hi, Cut the Craggle. Yeah, that's hard to say, isn't it? <laughs> cut the there you go, it's much better. Cut the Craggle. Mm. Look, there we are. Mm. How are you doing? Good. <laughs> Great stuff. Is that a Minecraft top I see? Yeah. Ah, another Minecraft fan. Yeah. Show them your muscles. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> look at that. <laughs> we got a new Arnold Schwarzenegger. Hello. Look at my muscles. Uh, <laughs> Um, Lego Madness says hi, Nolig, and hi. Monkey Man says hi, Nolig, hi. and Nicoletta says hi, Nolig, Jelly Bean says hi, Nolig, <laughs> and look, there's Shy Time, is my time, we're just talking about you. Yay, Shy Time is here. Hi. Say bye, everybody. Bye, buddy. Bye. 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 Smell you later. Bye. Smell you later. Bye. <laughs> <laughs> I thought you were horrible. I know, he doesn't get as good looks from you. No, God, no. <laughs> Not from his mom. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I was going to say about the, the brick sketches, because there's a similar thing with that, isn't there? That um, Obviously, I don't think it was a Lego design. It didn't work for Lego, but it was a fan who was making these things. And I always get this wrong. I think he was posting all, uh, pictures of them on Flickr. And obviously, Lego decided to make them as a series. And I feel like it's been... <sighs> I don't know what the, what the word is for it, but it's been a disappointment because I've seen the pictures of the ones that he was doing and they're fantastic. Yeah. And the ones they chose to release are just so bad. Um, Chris McVeigh is his name and he um, he used to post them on uh, most of his um, platforms and he used to make these cool little um, small um, builds as well, but they hired him and... Um, you know his versions, his old, his original, as you said, his versions were better than Lego. What they they came out. I mean, when I saw the prices of those Star Wars ones, I was like, no, that can't be right. It can't yeah. be right, and it was right. It's the only Lego set I've seen where they've reduced the recommended retail price. Not as in they've done a reduction as a sale, but they've actually reduced the recommended retail price after the fact. And I was yeah. talking to one of the guys in the Lego store when we were allowed to go to the Lego store. And he said he'd been working for Lego for six years and he'd never seen it before either. It's the only time where they've you know lowered it. That's yeah. got to be a sign that they you know they priced them too high. But again, you have to you have to congratulate Lego for trying something different, trying something new. And those little things, I think I don't know what the what the time frame was between them, but they were like the 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 forerunner to um the the Lego art, the the mosaics. Yeah. I don't know if they're related or if someone got got a light bulb moment and went, Hey, although they were making the mosaics in the mosaic maker in the Lego store, so maybe not. But um it's good to try yeah. stuff out, and it's good to test the market. And you know that's why video is good. And I, I'm glad they test their. I'm glad they're making these things because they are bonkers, but they're brilliant. And yeah. you know the price, as you said, the price is rubbish on them. Um, but they're just like I'm. I, myself and um, one the Bridge Bricks did a live stream the other day, and it turned into a video live stream and we were just so in awe with all the the cool tiles these are all tiles they're scannable she's called candy mermaid but if you look she's actually an ice i don't understand why it's candy but look at her hair her hair is amazing amazing Everything fantastic yeah. Mrs. Crackle built that one and she's she thinks we, i haven't checked it yet but the mermaid tail is actually a new mold it is, yeah, yeah um, definitely. It's not, the old, it's not the old mermaid one, it's a different one. Yeah. If you look at the, the tail there, it's completely different. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I don't have a mermaid handy, but... um, I do somewhere, because I actually... Ha I The last part of the Caribbean set I built was White Cat Bay. I mm. built a live stream. Famously, the build exploded midstream. So, <laughs> but I need to. I was need to do a review of that, and I need to build some more Pirates of the Caribbean sets. But the thing was with that is that because of COVID, I obviously we didn't go on holiday. Normally, me and Mrs. Crack would go to about three or four 
comic conventions a year. Uh, we normally have a break in London, at least one or two breaks in London, you know, just a weekend break. Couldn't do any of that. But the money I had, I have money automatically going when I get paid into like a savings pot was still going in there. So I used that to collect the Pirates of the Caribbean theme instead, this theme that I missed out on. And I was doing a series where I was building the set on a live stream and then like a week or so later doing a throwback Thursday review of it. And I was having a blast doing that. But then what happened is they called me back from third out early. So I just lost track of that. I think it's been six months since I built the set and I haven't reviewed it yet. But I keep promising I will get back to it. I will... Uh, I will review White Cat Bay and then I'll build the next set because I've got the Black Pearl built, but I need to build um, the Queen Anne's Revenge and also the Son of Mary as well. And there's a couple other sets as well. Oh, they're so cool. I really like the display with these as well. And the Yossi Kings Patrol with like the dogs. That's cool. You yeah, have that one instead. Love it. Uh, that's great. And they're really cute. They are very cute. Now into the budgies. What you said about about the brick sketches, though, is I remember because Bfab for months before was saying that he knew there was going to be mosaics coming. He, he was bang on the money with what they were going to be. But I remember yeah. when the brick sketches got revealed, and I was like, oh, okay, was it like Chinese whispers? And this is actually what the met mosaics are. And then obviously, no, the mosaics came separately. But the thing with brick sketches, as I applaud Lego for seeing you know a fan doing something and making it a reality. But I was just disappointed with the ones they chose, the price point, and also the fact they left out the pens. Because whenever he did one, he would do a brick-built pen, like a Sharpie or a pencil or a crayon next to it, as if it had been drawn. And they look fantastic. I forgot that, yeah. And I just feel like they should have done they should have done that. If they included that, they might have even justified the original price. But I get why, if they're doing DC, they have to do Batman and Joker. Star Wars, though, why they chose to do a First Order Stormtrooper and BB-8, I don't know. <laughs> I know. you. Something properly iconic would have been. But I, I think Darth Vader would work pretty well. Yeah, Darth Vader. I mean, even if they had done like, something like Chewbacca or something, you know, if you imagine the texture or something like that on it. Yeah. But the BB-8 looked awful. And the First Order Stormtrooper, just meh. I just and now they've done the Mickey and Minnie ones, and I feel like they look like nightmare fuel. I know Mahan. I don't think he's, I don't know if he's still here, but uh, Mahan says they're day one purchases, but not for me. <laughs> yeah, I think there's more pieces than the other ones. I, I, I'm I'm disappointed because I wanted the series to succeed, but I feel like it's already failed before it's properly began. If that makes sense. I think we might get more brick sketches. I hope so. I hope so. I just, I'm surprised we got the Mickey and Minnie ones. I honestly thought that after the initial four failed to take off, that we wouldn't, um, you know, we wouldn't get any more. But I think they reevaluated those brick sketches the same way as Brickheads. Like, I mean, I did a video and on on about Brickheads ages ago when people were saying, "No, they're gone. They're dead." Side like. Don't do the video. I was like, no, there's definitely more coming, and there's definitely a Frankenstein monster. And people were like, oh, what? what? <laughs> and, um, you know, that was that was when I, that was when I used to listen to leakers, and you know, I was like, no, definitely. But now I just try not to listen to it because I know if I'm doing something somewhere, I don't want to 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 say, oh no, this is happening. And and, and then, like, I mean, I've, I know other people who 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 would tell me stuff and I don't want to get them in trouble either, you know. <laughs> they would the video saying Brickheads is dead because I had some inside information from someone who works for Lego. I won't say who or how high up they are. And they told me that Brickheads was cancelled and that they weren't doing anymore. And I did a whole video and I thought like I had got some breaking news and then yeah. they carried on. What we what we did have, we had a year where they, they proper dialed back how many they were making because they were making so many so quickly. And I think that year we didn't get any licensed ones. Yeah, They took a break from licensed brickheads, but they obviously haven't died and they're, they're still going strong. But I feel like they definitely had to reevaluate because I remember when they first came out, I was like, these are just knockoff Funko Pops. Yeah. But they got so much better. And I, I really like brickheads. And I'm someone who normally focuses on collecting Lego set of start a minifig scale because I yeah. like the idea of this minifig world and having the idea that you know the minifigs populate that. So yeah. but brickheads like those look at how cute they are. 
I know. I mean, I blame Chris from Bricking It and Brixie because the two of them have, have been collecting them and I didn't want to collect them. And I see their collection and they look awesome. And I'm like, no, like, yeah. I could have one a week or what two every so often and if i want to collect them all now i have to spend hundreds stop even listening though, I feel I like to... even if you had started though it, you would have had trouble because there's the whole lego movie 2 ones that were only yeah. available in the us like and there's other ones that are comic con exclusive they did one for the supergirl tv show so i know that. dj uh, or dj inner blade as he's known in some circles <laughs> uh was Trying to catch, uh, trying to catch, trying to collect <laughs> every single ticket. Um, and I think he's given up on that now. He's like, yeah, that's just just a fool's errand almost. Unless you've got like excessive amount of disposable income, it's it's pretty hard to do. I think you're probably missing a few of them. Like we haven't got the Ninjago ones. Um, oh yeah, we didn't get the this. Lego Movie too because we wasn't really interested in them. They weren't available over here though. No, no, every time I saw them, they weren't there. Mm. Um, but otherwise, yeah, I managed to get the Pirates of the Caribbean brickheads. Oh, they were good. They were, yeah. I got them for a good deal. I think it was like 30 for both of them. Sealed. I just wish they had done someone else. Like, I know they were meant to tie in with the uh, the fifth movie, which is the worst one. So you had Jack, which is fantastic, and you had Salazar, which he is he's a cool looking villain, even if he is pretty rubbish in the film. But can you imagine if they did a brickhead of Davy Jones? Oh, that Davy Jones thing. <laughs> That would have been so good. Like the David Jones minifigure is fantastic. It's one of my favorite minifigures. Um, but like a brickhead of that would have been good. You got Budgie's brain. Did you ever get the bird brain? Bird brain. Did you ever get the the go brick me set? Oh. No, I missed out on that one. I know. Um, I know. I think. I think there's. You see, I, every now and then I go and I scour for all these like obscure shops in Ireland, and I found. Um, I found a Lego Batman Batgirl, um, and I bought her like two weeks ago. And Ray and they they both have the printed tiles, so I was quite happy with that. But um, as far as anything else, I didn't get anything else. Yeah, I I think we've got most of the Lego Batman movie ones. Do we get all of them or? I think we got them. Yeah, you had these. So. Was the last one you needed. Yeah, because I, I remember that we had him in the in the room at one point, and every time I open my eyes at night, his eyes are just glowing <laughs> back at me. You know. <laughs> but I remember that was Robin. I think was the first one to have glasses. The first brickhead to have. Yeah. yeah. So the, the gold brick me one. I remember when I got it. Rather than try and build myself, I tried using it to build a brickhead of Pia Venkman from okay. Ghostbusters. Oh. I got about halfway through my build, realized I needed some more pieces, ordered them on a on Bricklink, and then about a week later, they announced the actual Ghostbusters uh, double pack. So I was like, oh, well, <laughs> I abandoned that mock. <laughs> Just bought Hilarious. the actual set instead. I think I built myself, didn't I? We had two you built yourself. Me. I did actually build a brickhead of Ramona Flowers, oh, yeah, which nice. I've never shown um on my channel or anything because I, I wanted to build a matching scott pilgrim brickhead to go with him and i just haven't got around to it so yeah i might have to I might have to revisit that project but currently i work on uh, my uh arcade mark i don't know if you've seen that i don't think i did yeah so i, I it was a mock i started back in 2019 and i kind of abandoned and uh I uh, I decided to revisit it, and around the same time, Minifix.me, who I review a lot of their stuff, um, said that, hey, we're doing these mini builds of like retro arcade games. And I was like, well, that's fantastic because I'm building an arcade mark. So yeah. it was like perfect timing. That's cool. That's pretty cool. That is cute how they've done that. I like that a lot. Miss Mr. Budgie's now. <laughs> <laughs> so we've uh, I've, I've done two videos so far. I'm, my plan is to make it a monthly series as I chron uh, chronicle my my progress building it. But uh, yeah, so it's 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 inspired by the arcade that I used to go to when I was like a a tween and a teenager. But I'm kind mm. of putting my own slant on it. But it's got like a, a mixture of like 80s and 90s and some early noughties arcade classics in there. So. Uh, Stuff from Pac Man to uh Time Crisis 2, uh, Sega Rally, and stuff like that. In there, I never got into going to um arcade, um, the arcades. I suppose some of them were a bit rougher in Dublin, to be honest. But there, was, <laughs> there was one in, in uh, you've never heard of Wicklow, but there was one in, in Wicklow, Wicklow is a county, and um, so I used to go to one in Bray, which was okay. And uh, but I, I never, I was never into 
I wasn't there was always a queue to play the game the the arcade cabinets as well so i never got to play much i remember playing spy hunter that's really the one that kind of stands yeah. out i, I love spy hunter. hunter do you remember i think it was called silent scope do you remember that one i used to love that one because it had the actual like the, the screen which showed on there but then you had this gun that was attached to it that was like a sniper rifle and to fire it you had to look down the scope but down the scope was like it, it was it was almost like a magnifying glass but it wasn't it was like hooked up to a different screen in there that would show you a zoomed in one so like you were actually using the scope but i used to, me and my friend we used to do like a two-person team where i used to be man the scope man the gun and he'd be my spotter so we'd go like top left and i move the scope up so like that you know and kind of <laughs> Yeah, lots of fun. The only problem was, I remember a couple of times, like there, with the scope up to my eye, and some bullies would go past and they smack the back of your head and just, <laughs> end up with like a black eye or something. Then, <laughs> and that's why Sai didn't go to those places. <laughs> <laughs> and you thought that you thought your arcades were rough. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> do I remember Outrun 2? Uh, I think I do. Outrun, yeah, I swear I did. That was wasn't that also on the Sega Genesis or? I say Genesis because everyone's been saying Genesis recently because I've been talking to Americans, but we know it is the Mega Drive. I didn't know. I didn't know it was the same thing. Oh really? No. Apparently, that I, I, what I read, the Mega, it was called the Mega Drive literally everywhere else in the world apart from North America. Like even in Japan, it was called the. Uh, I don't know why it was called Genesis because it wasn't Sega's first console. That was the Master System, or did they even have one before that? I think so, Master System. Yeah, I don't know. I think the Master System was the first, at least it was the first like global console they had. But yeah, I, I love retro games. Yeah, I we didn't. I mean, I remember the first time I played kind of a home console thing was went to a friend's house and they had an Atari. Now, which Atari? I don't know. It was Atari with kind of wood around it. And we played, oh. um, it was like. Um, I know that I know Atari. Atari was actually. Yeah. And then a friend of mine up the road, he had a, a C64, and that was um, the first sight. Like, I mean, it was crazy. You put a tape in, and then you go, okay, see you, and you go off for dinner. And then you come back about 40 minutes later, and it's still loading up. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Brilliant. Do you remember, um, I don't know if, if did, you, did you ever have the VHS of Batman 89? No. I used to have the copy of that, and at the start of that was a thing, a competition to win a Commodore 64. If you answered, it. and the weird thing was, answer this riddle from the Joker. It was like a riddle from the Joker, you know? <laughs> like, okay. <laughs> shouldn't it be from the Riddler or something like that? But yeah, I, I, I mean, my first console that I actually owned myself was the Mega Drive. But I previously played on. Uh, I think my parents had. It wasn't like an official Atari. I can't remember what it was, but it had stuff like Pac Man, um, and there was like a Snakes type game on there. It had Pong and stuff. Um, and it had like it had two different controllers. You had one that was like a square block with two buttons and um, like a joystick, and then you had another one that had the wheel that you turned. You know, for pong, you used to turn a yeah. wheel. But uh, yeah, and I I also played I think around the friends who had a master system, and it used to it used to turn the console on without a cartridge in it, and you play Alex the Kid. Then that was the game that was built into the console. That's pretty cool. Yeah. I, I, the first console I ever owned. Well, it wasn't a console, and every time I try to explain it, no one has ever heard of it. It was it was a Sega, like not a handheld, but it was about this big, and it was orange on the outside. And I remember it was Sega because I used to be able to play. It was um, Sonic was on it, but it was like a little arcade game uh, and like an arcade cabinet kind of, but lay, lying down, and it was brilliant. But no, I can't find it online, and I know I wasn't. You know, dreaming it, but um, <laughs> it was, it was brilliant. but then the first actual real console was a PS One. Wow! Yeah. When, when you say PS One, do you mean like the PlayStation or the yeah. PS One? Was... Like, we always called the PlayStation the PS One, but then they re re they released then the PS One. That was like a slimline version of the PlayStation. So when you say all oh, the, P I remember seeing someone like, oh, I, I remember playing a PS One. They were like, well, I played the PlayStation. Like that's obviously what I mean, you know? Yeah, it was <laughs> P PSX first, I think, wasn't it? I don't know. I remember there was PlayStation, just so many PlayStation. Then they, I remember they did a sl slimline one. I said PS One, yeah. but I yeah. think by that point we already had the PS Two, or it had already been announced. 
I mean, anyway, yeah. I, I, the PS2 was cool. I ended up getting um, what happened was I was um, I was watching MTV and um, when they used to have music on it, and it was a competition, and I can't remember what the question was even, but I won the competition, and the prize was a pink um pink ds light or something and um a signed photo of dave berry so this all arrived yeah dave berry so this all arrived over to ireland and they called it out on the, on the show and everything and i was like oh my god i won so i brought the the pink p um the pink uh, ds down to gamestop and i said can i trade this in <laughs> brand new and they were like it's a pink one. I was like, yeah. They're like, where'd you get this? I said, I, I won in a competition. So I was able to swap that and I paid, I think, about 50 quid and I got a, a satin silver PlayStation 2 and it was glorious. It was so slim and oh, it was amazing. So wow. was cool. Do you remember, do you ever play Time Splitters on the PS2? I did. I didn't like it. I my kind of games were um the Resident Evil and Silent Hill, and that was all I played. Um yeah. I I loved Resident Evil 4. That was the only Resident Evil game I liked, and I feel like that was the best one they ever did. Mrs. Crowell, you're quite a uh, Resident Evil connoisseur, <laughs> aren't you? I am. I owned the Resident Evil 4 on every single console apart from the PS2. Wow. <laughs> I love that game so much. She watches all the anime uh, Resident Evil yes. films as well. A new one coming out this year, a new series. I'm excited for that. Yeah. I didn't even know that. A few people are saying that you build very fast. Do I? Yeah. <laughs> They're saying that I take ages to build, and you've built what one, two, three, three sets. Like oh, no, that was built before. Was, yeah. Just brought it down to show you, but yeah. I would pretend you built it here as well. <laughs> <laughs> but Joe, you know, it's funny that you mentioned though, about like the the Commodore sixty four pun the tape and then taking ages to load the game up. I mean, the one thing is you do that every single time you want to play. But nowadays, when you get a, a game. You put it in the console, it has to install. There's always a day one update. Oh, you know, and the, and the thing is, as well, even afterwards, like if you like, I wanted to play a game I hadn't played for a while, I had to plan ahead because I had to update the game. Because since I last played it, there's been like four or five updates. Yeah, like, I, I miss like I was a generation where you put a disc in the get in the console it and it loaded straight away. <laughs> The only problem you used to have sometimes is you had to blow on the cartridge, you know, the Mega Drive oh, cartridges God, on the yeah. N64 because there was dust in them, you know? That was it. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, sometimes I, I, I do that. I blow on the, the, the disc or into the um, USB thing or the cable or whatever, and Nullig is always like, what are you doing that for? And I'm like, it's it's just a habit. Like, it's... You know, it's <laughs> <don't> do, that. <laughs> do, do you also re rewind your DVDs? <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> I remember the first time we rented the DVD and uh, we went to take it back and my mom was like, you haven't rewound it. And I was like, you don't need to. And I was trying to explain to her, I said, it's basically, she had a CD player. I said, it's like a video version of a CD. You don't rewind a CD to get back to the start, do you? Like you did with cassette tape, you know, audio cassette. She went, no. I went with the same thing with this disc. And then she looked at me and then she go, but the next person is going to come in at the end of the film. I'm like, no, you don't need to rewind it. I was like, it's literally the same thing. I was like, how do you understand that you don't need to rewind a CD like you did an audio cassette, but you can't understand that you don't have to rewind a DVD like yeah. you did with a, you know, a, a video uh, tape? It's just. <laughs> we got there in the end, but you know, parent. It reminds me of. Um, sorry, Mrs. Craigle. It's okay. She's built for mm. he. I think, yeah, he, I think he, if they have the blue on the beak, they're a he. Yeah, it's the brown that's a he now. So yeah. he's built. Look how pretty he is. Is that true in nature? Like that with those birds, if they've blue, it's a boy. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. that kind of kicks everyone in the bum who says, oh, you shouldn't give blue to boys. It doesn't make sense. Blah, blah, blah. <laughs> nature tells us it does. Yeah. Isn't it funny that so often in nature, and I'm going to get killed for saying this, but so often in nature, they always find that the males are the, the attractive one, the bright, colourful ones. Whereas we yeah. think in humans, we feel like it's the women who, you know, put makeup on, get the pretty dresses, and men just sort of turn up and go, yeah, whatever. You know? Because <laughs> guys are idiots, and we need to kind of peacock <laughs> to get women. You know what I mean? Look at a real peacock. He, like, jacks himself up with a big tail, and he's like, hey, how's it going, baby? And, you know, they walk by, and he has to jump around like a fool going, look, look, look at me, look at me. Uh, Black Sea Supreme Leo Kyle Sam, the stream will probably end 
after uh, Mrs. Crab was finished building, and we'll probably start wrapping things up then. Which will probably be like in two seconds, seeing how fast she's building right now. Mm -hmm. Not building that fast. But no, yeah, yeah, you're absolutely right. But I don't know. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I, I'll, I'll get crucified for saying that now. Like, you're calling women ugly. <laughs> But it, no, again, again, it goes back to guys being idiots and like not not being, you know, we need to be shown, hello, we're over here. I was like, oh, hello. Otherwise, we're just like probably stuck in our basements with our toys. <laughs> What's so bad about that? <laughs> yeah, well, you need to show <laughs> I mean, I'm quite fortunate Mrs. Crago is into a lot of the same stuff that I am. Um, mm. Like, we do still have different interests, you know, and we disagree on some things, but. We have a lot in common, whereas I know some people, like some of my friends and some people I know, they're in relationships where the only thing they have in common is a physical attraction. And, you know, because they're with together for a long time, they, they do end up, you know, having a, a certain level of affection for someone. But I just feel like, what do you talk about? Like, what do you have in common? Like, the guy's like, oh, I, I can't do this because she doesn't let me do it. It's like, I'll wait till she goes out and all this kind of stuff. And it just, I don't know. I don't understand it. To me, like, Mrs. Craig was my best friend. Yeah. So, you know, I think it might come down to conversation as well. You, you know, when when you get to when you're starting out with somebody, you need to say, "Listen, this is kind of part of me, and I like doing this and I like doing that." And if I think if the other person isn't into it, well, then they're not really, you know, you, they're not your soulmate. Um, whereas with myself and Lorraine, I got into Lego when I was in, with Lorraine, and um, she didn't ditch me or say, "Oh my God, I'm going to leave you if you if you don't stop spending all that money." Blah 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 blah. She kind of just went along with it and was like, like Mrs. Craggle was just, you know, she's my best friend, and we're we're we've never thought about it. Yeah, I mean, I I came out of my dark age when I was with you. I don't, we'd already been going out for a few with years. With me. <laughs> no, with Mrs. Craggle. <laughs> oh, <please. laughs> yeah, so that's when I came out of my dark age. But you'd also been collecting the same poly bags in the newspaper. Like, do you have that in UK when it used to be the Daily Mail used to have like you get a, a, a voucher and take it to like a news agent and get a poly bag of like a Lego Spider Man or Lego Lord of the Rings Gandalf and stuff like that. So there was already a common interest, but as I got into it, I feel like it rubbed off on you as well. Yeah, it's like fighting over who, who gets which set. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's the thing now. Like, if, if we're both interested in the sets, even though, like, what's mine is hers and vice versa, we do have to say, okay, well, wh which one of us is getting this set? Because who's going to get to build it, you know? But, like, the minifigures yeah, go half on, don't we? Because we collect the minifigures together. Yeah, the CMF series, we, we, we collect, we go halves on. We normally try and display those, but... Yeah, like there was a bit of back and forth about one set, wasn't it? What was it? The um, I forget what set it was, but it was recently, and I was like, I want to build that set, and you're like, but I want it, and I was like, okay, well, you can you can have that set and build it if I can have this set. Oh, I can't. We kind of came was. to a treaty, you know. Truth, you have that. Jack says it's the beard. Yeah, chicks dig the beard. <laughs> <laughs> have you ever thought about a beard? Um, when I was about 16, I got my appendix out unexpectedly and I was about a week in the hospital and this beard grew and it was red and black and brown and it looked like a, you know, those blankets you bring on a picnic. It was like that. <laughs> but, I said, no, they're not for me. Now, sometimes I wouldn't shave maybe for a week and a half. So like I've got like one of those 1980s beards, but um. No, I, I like to um just be smooth. And Lorraine's not into me rubbing her um my face or my prickles off her face. So no, I when I was younger I thought I'm gonna grow a beard, but they weren't popular then. There was like a beard was for an old man back then. Back yeah. then in my day. But now like I think they're pretty cool, yeah. Yeah, beards are quite in at the moment. I didn't grow a beard because they're trendy. I grew a beard because I got board of shaving and it just sort of <laughs> stuck and i started becoming known for the beard then so that kind of happened by accident and i feel like now that if i ever tried to shave it off i just lose my identity <laughs> like, like, who would guy. I be without the beard <laughs> But the good thing as well, I suppose, if you work anywhere corporate or anywhere, like, and you grow a beard, they can't tell you shave your beard off, but they can say to you, shave, go and have a shave, you look rough, which is, and I always used to say, I'm growing a beard, leave me alone. And they'd be like, yeah. every day you say that. Isn't that funny? Like, I remember, like, my dad had uh, a tattoo on his um, upper bicep, and when he was working in this one 
place, he wore a, a short sleeve shirt because it was um, it was really hot, and they they had they made him put plasters over his tattoo. Really? It, wasn't, it wasn't anything offensive. It was literally just his initial. And uh, yeah, he had to uh, he had to cover that up. And you feel like nowadays they wouldn't be able to discriminate against that sort of thing, you know? Yeah, exactly. There's the one. Oh, that's so cute. I really like how they've done the new techniques on these. They're really good. They're very good. <laughs> Sam Jones says, "I second the board of shaving." <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I also hate the feeling of my skin after I after I've shaved. Like it's that it just feels like a bit I don't know, it feels a bit fake. It doesn't feel like my feel like my skin. <laughs> you know, because yeah. I guess the pores of you know, if you do it properly and you've used like you know the stuff, your pores are all open, aren't they, after you shave. And you splash water on the aftershave on there and it just yeah, don't feel right. It's probably the worst thing to do is like but I haven't seen anyone pouring after shaving their hands like and doing that for years. Like, but um, it stinks to be Jesus out of you. Yeah, although uh, <laughs> I always think of that Home Alone clip. You know? <laughs> oh, <laughs> it, it doesn't work because he hasn't shaved at that point, does he? Like, he just puts it on his face. And the whole point is that when you shave, you open the pores up, and that's why it stings. You know? Yeah, yeah. When's the last time you shaved your beard? Like, just shaved everything clean off? Oh my god. A long time ago. Many, many, many it's gonna be. It's probably your graduation. Wow. Massive. No, because I was clean shaven in 2015. Did you? Yeah, because I. Oh yeah, yeah. Okay. 2015, I, I think yeah. it must have been 2016. It was the last time I was clean shaven. Wow. So yeah, it's about five years now. I've had a beard. Lorraine's um, brother-in-law. He always had a beard. Like when he met the family, he had a beard, and I think he's married thirty years or something. So like none of them ever saw him without a beard. And then there was um, a charity um, thing in the golf club. So he said, like to raise money, he'd shave his beard off, and they did it there in the golf club with all the members and everything, and um, shaved his beard off. And I swear to God, he looked like he was about nineteen. And- <laughs> You know, people at the bar then didn't say the usual kind of like barman would, would come over. Ah, oh, how's it going, Brian? What are you having? Whatever. And he'd say, but they were ignoring him because they didn't know him. They thought he was just a guest. And he, yeah, he, he, I, I, that he was one thing. When I was like in, in my 20s and I used to shave, and I remember people used to think I was like 16. It was so frustrating. Uh, <laughs> it was just, yeah. I remember one of my friends was like, I don't understand why you look so young when you shave because he he was the same age as me, but he quite quickly developed. You know that thing where you know, men seem to have like a grey, like the, the tone of their skin goes grey around where they shave? Yeah. I've never had that, but he had that pretty much from when he was 17. And uh, he was like, he goes, I imagine that when you shave, another layer of skin suddenly grows over the the, 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 the cut follicles to cover it up because you look, you look like you can't never shave the day in your life, even though I know you you have. And I was That's like, thanks for that. Yeah, appreciate that. So, I think that they get that great thing because they don't go against the I always go against the grain. And uh, I think some people just go with the grain, and they, that's why they have that Homer Simpson thing. Yeah. I mean, I never heard. I, I was confused by the whole five o'clock shadow. Like, someone can grow a shadow over the course of a day. <laughs> like, I don't. I don't know anyone whose whose beard grows quite that fast. Do you? No, God, no. I mean, maybe maybe they're still in overdrive. You maybe, know, it's, maybe it's a change in diet. It's like the whole thing. Like in in the seventies, dog poo used to be white because the, the dog food was different. Oh, is that what that is? I just thought it was because it was there for f- a few days. Yeah, it was. It was. It was because it was like a, a, they said it was a difference in the dog food, and also a lot of um, dogs didn't have speciality food bought for them. They used to have scraps and bread and stuff like that. But the type of dog food that used to be manufactured, that used to be produced then, resulted in them having white dog poo. Where it's now, I haven't seen a white dog poo for ages. <laughs> the only reason I know about this is in, it was in the episode of Life on Mars. If you've ever seen that show, it's about a copper who goes, if he, he, he finds himself in 1970s, he gets hit by a car and suddenly he's back in time. And, I've heard of it, but I haven't seen it. And he's there with these other coppers, and these other coppers are like sort of interrogating this guy and they're pushing his face down towards this do- white dog poo. And he goes, White dog poo? That takes me back. I haven't seen that in years. And I was like, What? So I Googled it. Those people were Googling it. Like, why was dog poo white in the 70s? You know? <laughs> 
That's mad. Never thought of that. <laughs> I know, it's crazy, isn't it? You say it to someone now, and they just look at you like, when was dog poo ever white? It was like, it was. <laughs> wow, the lives of an 80s kid. <laughs> <laughs> that's blown my mind <laughs> this is the, the type of conversation you come to cut the craggle for you'll never, find, you... you'll never find another lego youtuber talking about the color of dog poo in the 70s exactly so we're going to give a big shout out to all the members out there you sam jones and i think everyone else has left because i can't see anybody with a thing behind their face or name but yep yeah, sam i hope you're happy and um, if you want more dog poo and um, just subscribe like and become a member to cut the craggle see he's better doing this than i am <laughs> everyone's better at self-promotion than i am i'm really terrible at it um, Look, even, yeah. even Jack likes it. Like poor dogs. Yeah, now they've got nice brown poo. It's brilliant. <laughs> yeah, like we do a one-on-one interview. Do you prefer when your poo was white or when your poo was brown? <laughs> ruff, ruff. <laughs> <laughs> I was waiting for someone to do the voice. <laughs> there you go. Sam Jones says, "I'm thrilled." Dog poo for the win. I feel like that's gonna be the next custom emoji. Is white dog poo, isn't it? Oh, that's brilliant. <laughs> I don't know if you've seen the custom emojis we have on here. Uh, Sam, tell us, Sam, since you're here, would you be kind enough to do a, a message with all our custom emojis so the lovely people can see what they're missing out on? Would you kindly? Would you kindly, even? <laughs> so, but yeah, I'm kind of a bit of fun making huh? some custom emojis for it. But what happens is as you get more members, YouTube gives you more slots. So the more members you have, the more custom emojis. And I've got a, a thread on um, our Discord where people can suggest what you know emojis they would like to have in the future. Oh, there you go. So I, I can't highlight it on here because StreamYard won't show them. But in the chat, if you're on YouTube, you can see we've got some brilliant custom emojis, oh, yeah. there, including uh, Cheese Life. We've got the Fan <laughs> Hammer, the Welsh flag, because the Welsh flag is missing on YouTube. Uh, we've got, I, I quite like this one, the Ghostbusters Pac-Man mashup. And we've also got Pizza Time, which is a pizza clock. So oh, that's pretty cool. <laughs> Christopher Mitz is here, says, sorry, lurking uh, for the most part, getting stuff done around the house while the missus is at work. Totally understand that, mate. Thank you so much uh, for being here and joining us. So, Sai, uh, do you want to tell us uh, what's coming up next on your channel or where, I was going to say where we can find you, but I think I put a link to your channel in the description below anyway, but oh, I was sec. Hold on. <laughs> there you go. Hello. <laughs> um, I have some video video reviews coming out, and on Wednesday, I'm going to be on my channel doing the backlog with London Bridge Bricks. That's Greg. We're, but the backlog is basically a live stream where we take stuff from our backlog, build it, and try and make a dent in a backlog, and it never works. But um, yes, so... <laughs> <laughs> that is on at eight o'clock on Wednesday on my channel. Then on Thursday at half past eight um, is the Sire Connor Lego live stream with special guests and a normal panel that we have every week. Um, so yeah, just if you haven't heard of me before, hit the description, hit subscribe, hit the bell, the one that says all, and you'll always get a notification. Thank you. <laughs> Beautiful. Love it. Absolutely fantastic. And, uh, yeah, I saw someone earlier on said about what about the whales. We have a uh, a little clip that we play when a new member joins during the live stream. But sorry to say, we haven't had any new members in this live stream yet. So um, we haven't been able to play the clip. You've got a couple of minutes if you want to join in now and become a member and, and see the uh, the whale clip. I don't think Sai's seen it, so he probably wants you to join. You haven't seen it, have you, Sai? I haven't seen it, so let's get a new member quickly. Yeah, quickly. You've got, you've got like two or three minutes. But there's the budgies. So I tell you what, we will give you a bit of a chance. We'll have Mrs. Crackle show off what she's uh, what she's built. And here they are. They're so cool. I love the text they've done with the uh, the, the black feathers there at the back. Yeah, it's really cool. And lots of the um, the, what are they? The curved pieces are coming. They're not the cheese ones. I'm not sure. Um, wedge could be the wedge. Yeah. They're all, like, what, almost like a, a slice of pie, aren't they? Or pizza? Hmm. Uh, pizza piece. Yeah. Didn't they actually yeah, use them for the, the pizza pieces? I think so. The small one. I I, I think <laughs> and I'm yeah. probably wrong here. You, you've got the round two by two uh, tile, which is a, a full pizza, and I think they did one which was like a quarter pizza, and they mm. used that piece. Yeah. This one. 
Yeah, look at the little stands. I like how they've done the stands as perches as well. And obviously that's the sticker, and then this is the other one. I don't quite get why they have two different fronts. Up. Like, because like, the dog had one that had paws on it and one that had bones. Yeah. Maybe for vegans. <laughs> <laughs> it's the beef have a proof sticker. <laughs> I do wish that those were prints, though, because normally with brickheads, you get printed pieces. Yeah, mm. the king with stickers is the birthday clown. Oh, yeah, I forgot about so that. That's because you can change what it says in terms of which language you want on it. Yeah. But that was the only one I thought, if I remember correctly, came with stickers. Oh, yeah, I can't think of another brickhead. It's like Lego Ideas. Lego Ideas used to almost be, be guaranteed it was always prints, and then they started putting stickers in them. And yeah. like now they've done the thing now where they actually do have new molds with the sesame street one but i also saw that set does have a fair amount of stickers in it and the Winnie the pooh one doesn't it? it has quite a few yeah i don't know i i i'm i'm not loving lego ideas at the moment to be honest with you i mean i've got the medieval blacksmith shop which i'm a, a big um fan of i'm gonna build that but i i just feel like They've won that the box art isn't great anymore because they're using the 18 plus box art, which it works on some stuff. But I used to like the, the, the big colorful boxes for Lego Ideas that used to be, you know, inspired by if it was a license or you know, have like, you know, like you think it was the exosuit one had like the space background and everything, you know. Yeah. But now they're all and they're all expensive. They're all these massive sets now, which is great. Yeah, but the you know, least expensive will be the Chris or the Winnie the Pooh one. Yeah. Like I remember picking up the DeLorean for twenty four ninety nine. Yeah, it's you know it should have a bit of a mixture. I feel like they should do one maybe one big one and then one sort of you know mid tier price range maybe just to balance it out a little bit. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. But there you go. It looks like we're not getting any new members this time. Hopefully, maybe you'll consider in the future. But I'm sad to say we won't see the whale clip today. No. Boo. Boo. <laughs> but I don't want to end on a downer so I want to thank everyone uh, who has come and joined the stream everyone who's watched, those who uh, have left us and those who have stuck it right out to the end, dog poo conversation and all, uh, I want to thank Mrs. Craggle for being such a great builder and knocking out what looks like four sets but actually yeah. it's three sets <laughs> in Easter. record time and of course a massive thank you to our guest Cy O'Connor it's been great catching up with you and uh, looking forward to seeing what happens next on your channel. Until next time, we will see you in the next video. Bye.